Greetings, truth seekers. Paranormal M welcomes you to a realm where reality and mystery collide. Hit subscribe, turn on notifications, and be prepared to be immersed in our latest mind-bending tales. We hope you're ready for a journey that transcends the ordinary. A real letter from the other side. So, if this isn't a legit message from the other side, I'm not sure what is. I don't even know where to start this story. So, I guess I'll start at the beginning. Here it goes. I met the love of my life in 1996 when I was 16 years old. For privacy reasons, we're going to call him John. He was my first love, and in many ways, the only love I've ever known. Fast forward 20 years, and though we hadn't spoken much and were both married to other people, I could honestly say that I was still head over heels for this guy. Unfortunately, he passed away from cancer a few years back, and the loss was devastating, to say the least. I can't get into all the details, but suffice it to say, John's death robbed me of any hope that I would ever experience real love like that ever again. I could go on and on about this, but I'll skip ahead to the interesting part. A few weeks ago, I was going through a box where I keep pictures, letters, and other things that remind me of John and all the experiences that we shared. I found a letter I wrote him after he died that I'd completely forgotten about. In the letter, I asked him to show me a sign that he was still around and still with me. I told him that I needed it to be a big sign, one that couldn't be mistaken for anything else. Not a flickering light or a simple coincidence. I needed a big, real, unmistakable sign. So I looked up and said out loud, John, I'm still looking for that sign. Well, a few days later I got a text from my mother. She sent me a picture of an envelope. A junk mail advertisement from a local insurance company. She had received three of these advertisements that day. One addressed to her, another to my father, and a third addressed to John's father. Now, John's parents live in the same city as my parents, but they do not live nearby each other. According to Google Maps, there's a two-mile, which is like a six-minute drive between their houses. There's a major thoroughfare that divides the city, and my parents live on one side, his parents live on the other. Their addresses are not even close to being similar, so that couldn't have accounted for the mix-up. I obviously can't show the actual addresses, but his address is like 5 Smith Street, and my parents' address is more like 8932 Lakeshore Drive. Not at all similar. Both of our family's last names are unusual and uncommon, and are not spelled or pronounced the same in any way. Again, I can't give too many details, but they are as different as Hamertia and Calcino. Both odd, unusual names, but not even close to being similar. My parents and his parents aren't friends. They don't belong to the same clubs or churches. I don't even think that they're Facebook friends. So, how in God's name did a letter addressed to John's father end up in my parents' mailbox. The town they live in has a population of about 30,000. What are the chances that this letter that was supposed to be delivered two miles away ended up in the wrong mailbox? A mailbox that just so happens to belong to my parents. I asked for a sign. He gave me one, right? I mean... I suppose it's possible that the letters got stuck together somehow, as they were being sorted, perhaps, but 
how. They weren't stuck together when my mother found them in the mailbox. And in any case, what are the odds that John's dad's letter would somehow get stuck to one of my parents' letters out of all the other thousands of letters it was being sorted with? Possessed Haunted Mirror and House I used to live in a house with my parents, which both myself and my parents had very strange experiences in. However, my parents didn't let me know that they had them, and so they didn't want to spook me any further. My room was particularly bad with the activities that used to happen, and this would be all the time. Just to name a few experiences. There was someone knocking on my door, saying my name when everyone was asleep. My guitar plectrum, which is a pick, was thrown at me from across the room, and my guitar was often strung, all six strings, all at the same time. Obviously, if a string goes out of tune, sometimes one will strum, but all six was definitely no accident. Anyway, I've had this antique mirror for as long as I can remember. It was a past relative's, and I always used to notice handprints and fingerprints on it, even though I never touched it that much. They were everywhere from top to bottom. My parents, obviously not wanting to let me know that they were also aware of the paranormal things going on, said to me, don't worry about it. It'll probably was just me touching it. Maybe I was just a mistake I was making. They seemed so sure that this was the case that I forced myself not to think about it, and I would carry on as if nothing weird was happening, which was very hard as something was definitely going on. Eventually, my mom told me that she was also concerned about my mirror and needed to speak to me about something. She'd seen, other than handprints, something else was there. She never showed me the photo that she took because she didn't want to scare me. But she said in the prints on the mirror was a perfect face of a devil. She showed my dad and his friend this before taking a photo, and despite them not wanting to believe in this side of things, they both could see it. Obviously, I didn't know how to react, and thought perhaps something was after me. I mean, who knows? Mom decided to get some advice. So she had gone to a shop near me called Spellbound. They sold things of all types, but mainly they were all to do with the supernatural types of things, healing and crystals. As you can imagine, the people who work there are all very aware of the spiritual world, and the other different types of paranormal experiences. So my mom felt this was the best place to get some advice. She spoke to a guy there about my mirror. They said that they had a few options, which were as follows. Smashing the mirror completely to get rid of any negative energy. Moving the mirror away from the reflecting on me while I'm sleeping. Saging the room for me to wear a black tourmaline, either in a necklace or bracelet form to help protect me. I wasn't worried if we needed to smash the mirror, as I was pretty terrified by this point. However, my parents didn't want to do this, as it used to belong to one of my relatives who wasn't with us anymore. So, my mom brought me back the black tourmaline, and we went on from there. I still noticed the fingerprints and handprints, but not so much strange experiences, so I felt perhaps the tourmaline worked. Mom did go back to Spellbound and spoke to the same guy again regarding that. She thought maybe the tourmaline worked, but there's still handprints where he'd said again. Might just be worth smashing the mirror. He began to explain how mirrors can be portals for demons and another life, and by keeping the mirror we could be potentially be letting them directly into my room, which, he cautioned, was extremely dangerous. 
my parents still didn't want to smash the mirror. Typical. So I ended up taking it with me when I moved out a few months later with every intention to smash it in my own time without them knowing. Well, when I first moved in, I did use it now and then to get changed while I looked for a new mirror. But I would hang a towel over it when I wasn't using it. Anyways, one day my boyfriend put it up a bit higher in the bathroom to shave or something, I don't know. He made sure it was secured so it had no way of falling. I had put it in the same position before, and I can literally 999.99999% tell you it couldn't have fallen, but as you can probably tell, it did. He left it for literally a few seconds to grab a towel, and within that time, there was a huge bang, then a smash. The mirror had literally shattered into tiny pieces like, even if I wanted to repair it, which I definitely didn't, there would have been no possible way. To this day, I believe that some sort of guardian or angel or fate broke that mirror, because as soon as I moved in with the mirror, the flat felt uneasy, and as soon as we disposed of it, I felt so much better better living there. Whether whatever was attached to the mirror followed me to the flat when I took it, I don't know, but nevertheless, I am so glad I'm no longer dealing with that anymore. Please don't ask me about why I didn't smash it sooner. It's hard when you're under 18 living with family, trying to get your way. As I'm sure you're all aware. It was a sick day I'll never forget. It was summer, and I was too sick for summer school that year. So one day my grandma arranged for me to go to my friend's house across the street the next afternoon. I was to stay at her house the night before, so I didn't have to spend all day by myself at my own house, or have my mom drive me in the morning. It was the year 2000-something. I had a great night with my grandma. We played cards and talked and did beads and embroidery all night. Then we went to bed like any other night. I would stay with her during the weekend sometimes, but this particular night, she had to leave for work the next morning. I was a big girl, and I was ready to have half a day alone. So anyway, I got up and had breakfast that morning with my grandma before she went to work at 6 a.m., she told me to have a good day and not to get into trouble, like she did every other time we parted ways. I told her to do the same, and then she said that she would call and wake me up later in case I fell asleep. It was a little early when she left, so I took a nap on her couch thinking if I went back to bed I'd sleep all day and not make it to my friend's house in time for lunch. That was a wee thing, we couldn't have made lunch so... I wanted to make sure I wasn't too comfortable. A while after falling asleep, or so I thought, I felt my blanket fall off of me. And it was cold. So cold that I shot up thinking something was wrong. Realizing a few seconds later, the world slowed. And about halfway through sitting, the rest of the way up, a wave of nausea and bone-deep chills hit me as fast as they would fade. I see some movement across the room, quickly go to put on my glasses to see who's home. Excited that it might be my grandpa home from driving truck, fumbled a bit. I find my glasses, put them on, and realize it's still dark outside. I look around, all the lights are on in the living room where I was sleeping and the ones in my grandma and grandpa's room down the hall were on as well. I don't remember turning them on, but one next to the couch. I then think for sure Papa's home and call out for him as I walk toward the bedroom. No answer. Not a problem. He has a hard time hearing from driving trucks. I take another step. Chills and nausea waves rush over me once more. I was noticing a dial tone on the phone in the bedroom. Suddenly, I was sick to my stomach. I take a hard left before the bedroom into the bathroom like an instinct. 
right before throwing up, barely making it to the toilet before vomit erupts out of me like a science experiment gone rogue. A minute later, the nausea spikes and drops as the heat returns to the room following the figure as it crosses past the open bathroom door with me kneeling in front of the toilet. I'm peering out of the corner of my eye, pretending I didn't see a thing, increasingly tensing up. When it passes fully, I collapse and sit down waiting for the nausea to pass before venturing out of my current known safe zone. Bang! I hear the door close and the dial tone go from a buzz in a distant room to now being so loud my little self was willed to go and hang it back up, no matter what was going on. I leave the bathroom, go into the bedroom where the blankets on my grandma's side of the bed were folded open, almost perfectly for it to have been done by her, and atop the covers the phone lay with the line open. The hairs on my back stood up as I grabbed the phone to hang it up. I'm now too scared to be by myself in their house. And with the sun finally coming up, I'm thinking it's 7.30 or so. I leave the house, sat outside until Grandma called later on around 9 to wake me up. I pretend to just be waking up, her not realizing I was sitting outside grasping the garage phone in my hand increasingly tightly for the last hour and a half. I can't recall ever telling anyone besides a school friend about this let alone my grandmother, for fear that she might not feel safe at home alone without us during the week. I'll never know if it was a home invader or just Bill, the next-door neighbor, coming to grab something, and I startled him, so we just left without a word. It may have been the mind of an anemic child riding the line of life and death, or a ghost. I would flatline a week or so later at the hospital from blood loss due to my illness. So who knows? The Reaper might have had his schedule off. Came for me at the wrong day, so he just let himself back out the way he came. Who is to say for sure? Am I crazy? My latest experience was pretty tame. I was hanging out with a few friends in between some buildings, where people park their cars, where some storage buildings and a football pitch are located. It's a pretty old area in my city, mostly populated with old people. When we were getting ready to head out, I look up to one of the storage sheds. I see a pure white wispy figure with no discernible features about 160 centimeters tall, kind of hovering five centimeters above the shed's roof. It looked as if it had a cloak over it, like a solid mass, but at the same time translucent. After I double take at it, it faded away rapidly, as if being taken by the wind. It's late at night, and I might have been high on weed but not enough to hallucinate such a thing. My other occurrence was when I was a little kid. Might have been six or ten years old. Honestly, don't remember. This one is not tame at all and was pretty scary. So much so that I feel obligated to share. I was in my house going from my bedroom to the kitchen to get something. I turn on the light in the hallway, or my, you know, that would be to my right, and that would be the living room. We had one of those big-ass plasma TVs. They weighed a ton. The light from the hallway was just enough to illuminate. It was enough to illuminate the living room pretty confidently. You could see what was going on in there. I first hear some scary steps coming from there. I couldn't tell the source. At this point, I had just taken my first step into the hallway. I then hear some giggling. I look over and I see a small girl. She was looking at me. I had just come into full view of the living room. She had pigtails and was wearing a dress. I think it was black. I just freeze and stare at her. She now quietly heads over to the TV and hides behind it. 
when our eyes contacted each other, I just ran into my bedroom and hid underneath the covers. I have had minor experiences all my life until the time where I stopped being afraid of the dark. I would hear my name being shouted on either sides of streets or at home. I would see things move as if there was an air current, like tissues or plants, bed sheets being tugged on, breath on my face while trying to fall asleep. But one day, out of nowhere, I stopped being afraid of the dark. Not by choice, I just woke up and I was no longer afraid. Pennies and Dimes Anyways, when I was four years old, my great-grandma died. She was my mom's mom's mom. I remember her a little bit, and I remember finding out that she passed, but I was four at that time. I don't think I was ever told this until I was older. But after my great-grandma died, dimes started showing up, randomly. My family member would find them in random places. I don't remember this as I was very young, my great-aunt, who is one of my grandma's sisters, and one of my great-grandma's daughters, apparently after my uncle got in a car accident, she checked the road where it was and everything. There were dimes on the road where the car crashed. Just dimes. When I was eight, my mom's brother, my uncle, he passed away. I was eight, so I remember all of it. But I wasn't super upset by it. Don't get me wrong, I was still really sad I'd lost my uncle. But I was never, like, crying about it. Until recently, after finding out what happened, I'd been upset. This isn't about how he died. Now, after he passed, pennies started showing up randomly. My mom would find pennies under her pillow which doesn't even make sense because she doesn't keep coins in her pocket or near her bed whatsoever. Then, as I got older, I started finding both dimes and pennies myself in odd places. I was ten. It was summertime. My older cousin who lives in another state just had twins, and they're my grandparents' first great-grandchildren. So they went to go see my cousin's wife and his kids. My grandparents have a dog, though, so me and my mom decided to stay at my grandparents' house while they're gone to look after the dog. We didn't stay there all night and all day, but we'd sleep there and stay for little bits during the day. There wasn't much to do one night. We decided to play Monopoly. We set it all up right there. Then the dog wanted to go outside, so we took her outside. When we got back... On the Monopoly board was a dime and a penny. We didn't put them there. No one else was in the house while we were gone. Like I found dimes on the seat of where I sit on a school bus. And I'll say that my great-grandpa left it for me. But realistically, somebody else was sitting there and it fell out of their pocket. But still, why specifically a dime? Same thing when I find the pennies most of the time. But finding both the dime and a penny on the Monopoly board doesn't make sense. They weren't there before when we went outside. And also, my great-grandparents house is old. My great-grandparents lived there with my grandma and her siblings. Then my grandparents lived there with my mom and her siblings. So my great-grandma did live there at one time. And so did my uncle. And sometimes I'll even hear footsteps upstairs there when no one's upstairs. And the footsteps are coming from my uncle's room. I still don't have an explanation for what happened. That was a few years ago. And I still think about how the coins got there. 
Recently, my uncle's death has been, well, it's been upsetting me. Last Saturday night, a lot of things were upsetting me. My uncle's death being one of them. With all that, I was crying. The next morning, we're going somewhere as a family would. And we were going for a long car ride. So just in case I got really bored, I grabbed a book. When I grabbed the book, a penny came out of it. I haven't touched that book in months. I never put coins in it. I was legitimately about my uncle's death the night before. And then that happens. My very unexplained previous house. This all would have taken place roughly 10 to 11 years ago, over a period of two years. We had moved into this older house in Abu Dhabi in the United Arab Emirates after living in another house in a city for two years. It was a creepy house, very normal and in a pretty populated area that was gaining more popularity. The house was quite old, built well on the outside and made from concrete, but showing its age on the inside. I never felt anything weird about the house, just annoyed at how often a pipe would leak or paint would need to be touched up. However, I very vividly remember two moments in that house. First, I was sleeping in my sister's room with my sister and mother. I must have been around ten years old, my sister being five. I didn't like sleeping alone, and neither did my sister. So we often shared rooms with our parents. I remember randomly waking up in the middle of the night. No idea why. After a few minutes of lying there awake, I would hear a surprisingly loud female scream. It scared me. I woke my mother and said, Do you hear that scream? To which she would respond, It was probably just the cats. There were many stray cats that lived in the area. But I knew it wasn't cats. It sounded as if a woman was screaming briefly and definitely sounded as if it came from inside the house. And it wasn't our cat. He'll be asleep with my dad. I eventually fell asleep again. Didn't bring it up. Never found out what that was. Secondly, one night I was lying in bed with my dad and my mom in another room with my sister. I was trying to fall asleep, and my dad was reading a book. We then both heard what sounded like a large plastic container being dropped. Me and my dad got up to investigate. My sister and mother were asleep, and there was nothing noticeable that had fallen. My dad explained that it was probably her cat that had knocked something over. We went to bed, and the next day I basically ignored the experience again. Didn't talk about it but we never found any signs of something falling over. After two years in the house and no other events happening to me, we moved to another house in the same area. It was newer and bigger. Nothing happened again, but a few years later I bring up my story to my mom one day, who then reveals that I wasn't the only one to experience strange things in that house. She explains how one night when me and my sister were sleeping in our own rooms, my dad had gone to bed to read a book, while my mom stayed in the living room to finish a cup of tea. My dad was lying on his side reading, when he vividly remembers feeling my mother get into bed with him. He even said, you finish that tea quickly. But when he turned around, no one was there. My mother was still drinking tea in the living room and me and my sister were asleep in our own rooms. He struggled to fall asleep that night. Another time, my mom's friend had come over to meet my mom and see the house for the first time, while me and my sister were at school. My father was at work. My mom's friend, we'll call her Linda, was sitting on the living room while my mom was making coffee for the two of them. Linda then sees my father walk up the stairs to the second floor, 
She greets my dad. Let's call him John. Hey, John. Good to see you. My mom comes out of the kitchen with coffee and questions who Linda was talking to. Linda says she was greeting my father. But my mother explained how my father was at work. No one else was in the house. Linda was adamant she saw a man walk up to the second floor. My mom and her go upstairs to check, find no one there. Linda left immediately and took a few months before she would come back. Finally, the scariest of them all. My mom was watching my sister while I was at a friend's house. My dad was at work. My sister was playing in her room while my dad, or excuse me, my mom read a book in the same room. My mom got up briefly to go to the kitchen to pack some stuff away. When she gets back, my sister is coloring with some crayons. My mom's confused as she keeps the crayons at the top shelf in the cupboard with the door closed. Because my sister went through crayons crazy fast. She asked my sister where she got the crayons, to which my sister replied. The man gave them to me. My mom was alone in the house and had left my four-year-old sister alone for only two minutes. This freaked my mother out a lot. She never told me about it. Told anyone, really. After moving out, many of our friends told my parents of how they disliked coming to our house. They couldn't say why, but said it had a strange feeling to it. My mom never told me about the incidents, as to perhaps not scare me. Ten years later, we haven't experienced anything ever again. But we all still very much remember and dislike talking about that house. Wife saw a dead friend 90 days after he died. Back in 2010, 2011, I met a World War II veteran who I became very good friends with. His wife passed away in 2012. Didn't have much of anyone left as he outlived his whole family. His parents were born in the 1880s and grandparents served in the Civil War. My mother often made dinners for him. We became very close. We spent a lot of time together. He was like a father I didn't have, and I respected and loved him as if he was my own. Fast forward to May of 2021. He had a fall at the nursing home. He broke his hip and a couple of ribs. He later fell again at the nursing home and broke his clavicle, three more ribs just a few weeks after his first fall. Sadly, that was the beginning of the end. He stopped eating and drinking and died in mid-July. He always had a fascination of ghosts. Told us a particular ghost story that took place in the 1950s. I remember I asked him to visit me if he could. He said he would try. The last time I saw him, he said, I love you, passed away shortly after. I was thankful I was there, but I think he held on just long enough for me to, you know, see him. So I wouldn't have to see him pass away. He died five minutes after I left. Now, back to the 1950s ghost story. He used to live in Kansas City around 1953 to 66 in a house that he had thought was haunted. If they had guests over, the guests often felt a presence or had a lingering feeling that something wasn't right. They would sometimes see shadows and hear things too. The house was built on an old Native American graveyard, but the ghosts that haunted their house seemed to be very friendly. My friend always treated the ghosts like a member of their family. So, maybe the ghost was friendly because of this. One day in 1958, he went upstairs to go check something in the guest room. Opened the door. He got hit with a cold blast of air and all of the curtains were completely horizontal toward the ceiling. He called his wife over who always saw it. 
the curtains remained that way for about five minutes before they slowly rested on their own. He left us the house, and we kept it, so we could remember him, keep his legacy alive. I would have dreams about him occasionally, nice dreams too, and left me feeling calm and at peace. We would sometimes hear footsteps and doors close in the house, but he didn't pay much attention to it, but one day I heard a crash in the master bedroom, and the curtains had fallen off the wall somehow. I put them back up, but couldn't figure out how it could have come off the wall. The scariest one was around 3 a.m. in the morning in mid-October. My wife and I were sleeping, and she heard a man talking. She couldn't quite make out what it was, but it sounded like he was telling a story of some sort. Something he always liked to do, by the way. My wife thought it was me talking turned around to see what was going on. She realized I was asleep, saw a shadow man standing next to the window right beside me with a triangular-shaped hat, completely opaque. It even blocked out the light from the side of the window. She got scared and screamed and turned on the light. The figure was still there, but disappeared about 15 seconds later. I woke up and she said I stared right at it, but I didn't see anything. Could this have just been sleep paralysis? She was able to move and talk, but I couldn't see the figure. She always has been a little sensitive to some degree. My apologies about formatting. Reddit is a pain to type on. Kids and I lived in a haunted house from the late 1800s. For the first few months, the house seemed pretty normal. But then one night, my son came screaming down the stairs in what I would call a night terror. I assume he woke up from a nightmare, and it just kept going. He finally took a deep breath and said, I was sleepwalking, I'm okay went back up to his room. Then the weirdness started. One night I was down in the basement doing laundry. I heard a small child's voice behind me. Hi there. When I turned around, no one was there. At that point, we started finding toys in the basement in obscure places. My first thought was that the children who lived there before had hidden them in the crevices in the walls. Then one day I noticed a box of old marbles appeared where I'd just cleaned. None of the toys belonged to my kids. I also set up a cheap dollar store alarm system around the office area, so I knew when the kids would sneak into the office to try to find birthday and Christmas presents, little stinkers. They did it often. One day when I was in the bathroom, the alarm went off. I yelled from the bathroom, Hey! Get out of my office. Since my son and I were the only ones home, I heard him yell from upstairs, I'm not in your office. As time went by, we could hear a piano playing at night that I thought might be the neighbors. Sometimes the lights and ceiling fan would go on and off. I blamed old lighting. The front door would sometimes open if not double locked. I told the woman to own the home before the new landlord bought it, as our kids were kind of friends. She told me the reason why she put the double lock on the door is that someone would open the door at night, and the reason she finally sold the house is because of all the weirdness surrounding it, including the piano. And this photograph was pasted over another photograph at the end that I wrote, and it's now gone. After that, we started looking for another place to live. It was during this time that really strange stuff started happening. My kids would feel like they were getting pushed up the stairs when going up. And then one night while my son was asleep in his room, he heard an old woman's raspy whisper from the closet saying, I'm gonna kill you. 
The kids would see shadows of figures going from out back in the porch area to the small building that belonged to our old house next door that was supposedly a candy store. It had burned up inside years before, but the outside remained undamaged. At this point, we moved. Strange feeling. Okay, guys and girls, probably many people have this feeling and ask about it here, but I have to talk about it. Every time I have strange feelings about being watched. At day I can ignore this, but the worst are nights. I feel this even in rooms where I have all the doors closed. I have dreams which ones I feel are really realistic, and sometimes I miss some people from those dreams, but I never seen these people. And the most important, I have strange luck in my life. Once I drank too much and finished hanging above a fence with spikes. Once I slept in a car where I drive with a hundred kilometers an hour and end up in a trench, but somehow I get through it. Cars look like a total disaster, but I made it. I remember when I wake up because I drive through chainage post and going down through the trench. Now this was a little divine altar, but next day when I go there, there was nothing destroyed. Everything was good, like I was never there, but my car was still full of grass and scratches. That's my dog. In other times, I had a really bad year and tried to end myself. And I'd take some sleeping pills and drink with two beers. But I think it was just too small of a dose. Once I read something about a multiverse, or something like that, not sure if there's a different name for that in English. And if you die here, you still live in another dimension and that one goes on. And also I heard many stories about some kind of spiritual guardian. I'm very skeptical, and I know I'll never find answers for sure, but I'm curious if anybody has the same feeling or has ever read or heard more about answers of these things. Connected mentally to aliens, or beings from another dimension, and saw proof in 3D normal physical plane. I'm 24 years old, and since when I was born, I was always interested in the philosophy of mind religions and why they exist. I was always a rational scientific person until when I was 23 years old. Little backstory first. My vision has always been extremely good. Never wore glasses or lenses. Always a very visual person. One of those guys who constantly stops to look at trees because, like many of you I'm sure, I recognize the sacredness in everything. I was always quite spiritual without even knowing what the spirit even is. I always felt also that my session of free thinking were guided by someone that wasn't me. Since when I was a kid, I always used my imagination. And I always was interested about the first person experience. Mostly because I feel like the realms of philosophy and religion and science will one day merge. So, since I was a kid, I always used my mind for what it is, a viewer. I always felt kind of guided in my thinking. I would see images, concepts, answers to questions I had about society and religion and so on. I always felt like I knew something else before my birth, but never paid much attention to these thoughts, telling myself they weren't really real. When I was 21, I finally started to take meditation more seriously. And my exploration into my mind received a great upgrade. At 
23 years old, I started to realize that the UFO phenomenon, to which I had always felt attracted to, was probably real. One day I was discussing this with my family at dinner. Of course, the members of my family were kind of surprised by the subject because they always saw me as maybe a more smart person and UFOs are for crazy people, according to popular belief. So mentally I told my guides in my mind, I said, if you really exist, and I'm not talking to myself right now, that means you can listen to this. And if you can listen to this, you can show yourself to me. Now if you do, I will give my life to this cause. If you do not, I'll get family and I will presume that I should do what my human peers tell me. Materialize on this physical plane so I can see with my own eyes. Or the party's over and I'll forget you forever. Next morning I was up at 4.30 in the morning. I didn't use cannabis the night before, so I was completely sober. I went upstairs and made a coffee. I had the intention of working out. I started to walk toward the park and not even a minute into the walk, I see my first UFO in my life. It was 5.02 in the morning of the 23rd of September of 2021. My heart started racing. I knew that they were them, my guides. I saw these four lights in the sky flying very fast in formation. Then the formation broke and they spiraled amongst themselves. They disappeared one after another, extremely fast, extremely close, and almost magical. Absolutely no sound at all. And it couldn't be a satellite. I always look up and always know what I'm looking at. After some months of realizations, I ask them in my head to give me the answers of what this place, Earth, is. They told me mentally. Alien Interview from Roswell Crash, written by Matilda. I didn't know the book or its title before asking, of course. They didn't really tell me with words, but more like with images. I found the book and read it and I was floored. I still don't know if these aliens are manipulating us and me, and they're actually enemies. But they're so subtle and they respect our free will so much that they don't give me this impression. It feels like they want to help us all. In the book they basically told us that we're immortal spiritual beings that we're trapped here because we're imprisoned. You cannot kill one like us, so you can only trap them. In the book, my favorite quote is, I sense your disbelief about you being a spiritual being. You want the proof of that? Be above your head now. For the first moment of my life, I realized the obvious. I am not my head or my body, I became aware that Air, the alien, is an immortal spiritual being, and so are we all. Basically, according to Air, we cannot remember our past lives because the people controlling Earth makes us go toward light that erases your spiritual awareness. And then on Earth, through mind control and false memories installed by the people we love, they ensure we cannot remember who we are and where we come from. Read the book before dismissing it, as it's kind of written in the preface. What is true for you is true for you. An Aswang stalked me. An Aswang is a monster in Filipino mythology that preys on pregnant women. Unlike the grisly attacks that usually are shown in horror movies, however, these monsters apparently just prey on the life essence of the unborn baby until it dies and the mother miscarries. The scary part is, is that these monsters are also part human 
meaning they could literally be anyone during the day. This happened in Metro Manila around 2011. My cousin told me, the old man with the new neighbors asked me if you were pregnant. I was shocked and never even told my family yet. I was 21. I worked nights in a call center. I never go outside when I'm home, and I was only a few weeks long, so I know I wasn't showing yet. How did this nosy old man know? The said neighbors were new in town, coming from one of the more popular provinces in the Philippines where witchcraft and uswangs are still the norm. They were friendly enough, though. So no one really had anything bad to say about them other than the nasty rumor that they know about a swang. When I was about eight months along, I was watching late night TV with my brother at around 2 a.m. Something big landed on our little tin roof, strong enough to rattle the windows. My brother and I looked at each other with wide eyes as we listened to the footsteps. Yeah, footsteps stop right on top of me. I was never a prayerful person, but at that moment I called on gods and saints and angels to protect my baby. Then I remembered my grandmother's story about how she escaped an Oswang attack by placing a pillow between her legs to mask the baby's scent. So, I did just that. We had no idea how long we waited, seconds, minutes, but we heard another jump, then silence. Until this day, I was glad that my brother was with me to vouch for me. I still couldn't believe it happened, and it happened to me. Then I remembered the nosy old man. Could it have been him? Something weird and mysterious and unfinished, I suppose. Creepy phone call. This happened around eight or nine years ago. I was in a mall with my daughter, and as a weekend treat, decided to go to a local cape shop to sample a slice of their chocolate mousse. A few minutes after getting seated, my phone rang. It said my sister was calling. She was at work at the time and wasn't allowed phones in the production area, so I was concerned that it may be important. When I picked up and said hello, a really creepy and really oily voice I didn't recognize said, Oh, so you're just here eating cake, are you? I think I may have said a few other things, asked the name and why they were calling, something like that. The voice just laughed and laughed. It was difficult to identify as male or female. All I know is that it was really, really wrong. I looked around and remember thinking that I was probably a victim of one of those gag shows. But then again, why go through all the effort of using my sister's name and number just for a prank call? I hung up and looked at my daughter. She was still eating cake. The people around us were minding their own business. The world stayed the same. My little cousin has a strong connection with departed ones. My little cousin, the son of my mother's sister, was born diagnosed with hemangioma as an infant. Hemangiomas, when an infant during their first few weeks of life, has an excess of blood vessels. This causes a rubbery reddish bump. My cousin had his on his left cheek, which caused a massive amount of inflammation. His left cheek was visibly larger than the right. One year before his birth, his grandmother passed away due to cancer and that apparently grew on her left cheek, literally the same spot as my cousin's hemangioma. My mother is of, well, she's of Japanese descent, and 
she's a firm believer of reincarnation. The rest of the family, however, isn't as religious, and we didn't see it as big deal. We just thought it was some one in a million coincidence. Two years after his birth, however, we were showing my little cousin pictures of the family. We happened to come across a picture of my late grandmother, the one I mentioned earlier. My cousin then proceeds to point at my grandmother and says, Look, Mommy, it's me. What are the odds of that? Also, when my cousin was two, my grandfather passed away. My cousin lives in the States, and I live in the Philippines. When my grandfather passed, my cousin's family came to the Philippines for his wake. We have a condo unit in Manila. We would bring my grandfather along with us there a couple of times, like playing in the casinos nearby. He had his own room that only he would use when he would stay there. As his funeral location was closer to our condominium than our main home, we decided to stay there the night before the funeral. All rooms were full due to relatives from the U.S. Since I didn't want to sleep in the couch, I decided to sleep in my recently departed grandfather's room. It was my cousin's first time in our condominium. The morning after during breakfast while my mom and her sister were laughing, my cousin out of nowhere says, Shh, Grampy's still sleeping while pointing toward the room I just slept in. Note that it was his first time there. Nobody ever told him that it was my grandfather's room. But we have a belief in the Philippines that infants and toddlers could see ghosts, and I'm quite convinced after all of that. Spooky story, get spooky evidence. My grandpa bought an old small house on a mountain like 60 years ago with a lot of forest. As he bought it, there was already a lot of talking in town about it being haunted. The story behind this house is that a hunter and his family lived in there, and he got killed in a quote-unquote hunting accident which was more likely a murder. His wife, not able to keep the family together, killed herself in the cellar. At first, I thought all that was just clever marketing, because he rents it out to other people in the summer, even though I've also heard the priest talk about this place independently. So, now, on to the paranormal stuff. There's a guest book in which people can write how they enjoyed their stay, so on and so forth. And a few people even know the legends of what happened there and make jokes about that. Perhaps they would say things like, The ghost was friendly this night. Things like that. But there's also a lot of entries of people from other parts of the world who couldn't possibly have known what happened there. They were always writing about the same things. Very, very loud steps from the cellar and outside. Asking if somebody was here at the time, a very bright light from the middle of the forest and in the middle of the night. There's at least ten acres of forest in each direction, and rarely some white-dressed woman walking in that forest. Now on to a personal experience. I've never believed in anything like that. That's why sometimes I sleeped up there myself. If always heard the steps, but never saw a light or a woman in the forest. This one night, though, was different. I woke up at 3 a.m. in the morning and needed to take a piss. I still don't know why, but I decided to go outside instead of the very nice wash closet we have indoors. As I started, suddenly, an extremely bright light shined directly in my face, ran to my car, never slept up there again. I feel like I'm going crazy with the amount of strange noises and things I see at night. 
before I get into my experiences, I need to give you a picture of where I live. I live in Arkansas, about 20 minutes from a very small town and 40 minutes away from Fort Smith. My fiancé and I live in a one-acre plot of land quite a ways from the highway surrounded by trees. We have neighbors, but none super close to us. My fiancé's father and grandfather live on this land with us, but they're in their own separate buildings. The first experience happened about two months ago. My fiancé and I were hanging out together because she was off that day. She works from a turkey packaging plant and has gone from 2 p.m. to anywhere around 10 p.m. to 1 a.m. We heard a lot of rustling and movement in the bushes and trees next to our small house. So I went onto the porch with my flashlight, wanted to see what was up. I'm still hearing the sounds but not seeing anything, so I just brush it off, go back inside. Well, the next day she tells me her grandpa heard stuff too, saw two glowing red eyes in the trees. He tells her whatever it was, it was taller than him, and he's six foot. I hear scraping on my metal roof, which I suppose could be branches, but the times I hear it, there's no wind. A few times I've heard light tapping on the side of my house. Sometimes I think I hear voices outside, but I'm always watching stuff on my phone or playing video games, so I always try to brush it off as me just hearing things. My grandfather has a dog who roams around the property at night when he forgets to bring him in and falls asleep. Fluffy has been barking randomly at night, sometimes for a few minutes to a few hours. A few nights ago, I let my dog out to use the bathroom. I have two leads for them, mostly because I can't trust them not to run off. I notice while I'm getting my St. Bernard off a leash that my husky's starting up the driveway at something. I can't see it. A few seconds later, she just starts cowering like she's scared. Ends up peeing where she is. So I yell at her to get inside which she does, and I start taking her lead off when I notice Fluffy race up the driveway and start barking. I book it inside. My husky immediately runs into her kennel. Wouldn't come out the rest of the night. Not even for a treat that my fiancé, who she adores. The day after the incident with my husky, I again let the dogs out. And as I'm letting my dogs back in, I notice two red glowing dots through my neighbor's fence that's about 30 feet away. And from the positioning, I can tell that they're four to five feet off the ground. I try not to freak out. I do my best to calmly get my dogs back inside where I almost have a panic attack. This was at 7.30 p.m. My fiance got home around 11 p.m. where I gained the courage to go back out with my dogs when the lights were still there. When I went to investigate the next day, they were gone, and that night, no lights. Yesterday, I let both my dogs out again, and we were out there for a few minutes when my fiancé comes rushing out and asks me if I'm okay. Apparently, she heard a loud noise like I fell, and like my St. Bernard yelped like he was injured. I got freaked out and told her to stay outside with me she tells me how quiet it is outside and how she's getting a bad feeling. That's everything I can remember at the moment. I don't know what's happening. Honestly, I feel like I'm going crazy. If anybody has any answers or similar experiences, please leave a comment. I'll answer any questions as best I can. to me. Was I really sleepwalking or was it something else? This happened around somewhere between the ages of 9 and 11. My mother, little sister and I used to live in another city but would come back down to our hometown every weekend. We would stay at my grandmother's house. Bit of backstory. 
I've always been scared of my grandmother's house. Bit hard to explain as I never really saw anything in her house. Just would always feel this horrible fear. It would be in the pit of my stomach like something bad was about to happen. Prior to us moving to another city, I would stay down at my grandma's house a lot, especially around the weekends as a child. She had two bedrooms upstairs, but had a bed downstairs in the living room because it was difficult for her to climb the stairs. I would always share my grandma's bed downstairs. I was too scared to sleep upstairs. Even after we had moved and all three of us would come down to visit and stay the weekend, my mother and sister would sleep upstairs, but I still refused to sleep upstairs with them. I always slept with my grandma. Never really had any issues other than breaking out in a cold sweat from fear. But this night was different. Bit more backstory is prominent to the story. I have an older sister who wasn't living with us and still lived in our hometown. She was meant to be coming down the next day to visit us. This is where it starts to get strange. I remember sitting up and getting out of the bed in the middle of the night, thinking that my sister was outside. The weird thing is, it was almost as if something was speaking to me, through me. I could have sworn I was talking to myself out loud. I got up and said, Big Sis is outside. And then I had to open the door to her. So I started walking, making my way to the front door. Another backstory. This is the last one, I promise. So my grandma's house layout was a bit odd. She had another room that we called the front room, where the front door was. So it kind of went front door, front room, living room. I hated the front room because it had faulty wiring. Didn't mind it during the day, but during the evening and night, I loathed it. It would always be, well, I would always be told to go in there and grab something for someone. I'd run in, turn on a light, and quickly try to grab whatever I needed to get and run out. Mostly due to the faulty wiring, but every time you turn on the light, it would go out for a few seconds. And when it did, it would literally freeze, and I would be frozen in fear. Then a few seconds later, it would come back on. All of this along with my fear of the entire house. I hated this room especially. So, going back to the story. As I'm making my way through the living room, I start approaching the front room. That's when fear starts setting in. It was pitch black in the front room, and I really didn't want to go in there as I was scared of the room, especially at night, like I said. So I tried my best to stop myself from entering the front room, but I had no control over my body. It was like I was a puppet on strings. The only thing I could move slightly were my eyeballs. So, by now I had made my way to the end of the front room. I unlocked the front door, opened it, stepped out, briefly looked around in search of my older sister. I think this must have been around autumn or winter time because a big gust of wind blew in my face and I regained control over my body. As soon as that had all happened, my grandma came frantically running out after me to bring me back into the house. They then started hiding the front door keys from me. Here's what confuses me the most. I've never had a history of sleepwalking. I've never sleepwalked prior to the situation, and I never sleepwalked after. It was only ever this once. Another thing that confuses me is that I always was under the assumption that sleepwalkers are really, well, never really aware of what's going on. When I feel like I was the most part aware, I just couldn't do anything about it as it wasn't in my control. Another thing I think might be worth mentioning, although this might be reaching and it might just sound insane within itself, 
It's that black magic is practiced a lot within my family. It doesn't help that my mother's sisters doesn't really get along well and probably all do weird-ass spells against each other for their own personal gains. The relationship between their mother, my grandma, was also a bit sticky. They would all compete against one another to be her favorite, so my grandmother's house was probably Hogwarts. This incident has always been on my mind, and I've always wondered what to do and what actually was happening to me because deep down, I've always never believed it was just sleepwalking. Whether it's something paranormal or something to do with black magic or witchcraft, or just some sleeping disorder that I'm not aware I have or had, maybe just got activated due to stress. Can somebody please explain this? For some context, I'm the joint youngest of my mom's children, being one of five with a twin brother. However, I have 12 siblings altogether, but all the others aside from me, my twin brother and the three others share both the same mother and father. I'm not sure if it's relevant, but just to lay it all out there. As a child, I was fascinated with the paranormal. I fully understood at a young age what a spirit and her ghost was. My nan would talk about her many experiences. She's not a woman to lie. But that's a story for another time. If anybody's interested in hearing that. Before the encounter I'm about to tell you about, I hadn't had really any relay or remember. So... Just some spooky things that myself or one of my siblings apparently did or said. But like I said, I can't really remember them, so I don't think they're worth mentioning. On to the story, anyhow. I was roughly about seven years old when my mom last minute decided to take me to work with her. She owned her own business, and I didn't want to stay at home with my older sister. My sister was asleep with me, and my mom left wasn't aware that I wasn't at home. From my twin brother and sister's point of view, this is what happened. Annalise woke up. She yelled to the top of the stairs for me and my brother to come down and help tidy up. My brother apparently came straight down and helped. Meanwhile, my sister yelled once again, Come down and help now, while threatening to confiscate my computer or phone especially if I continued to ignore her. Got angry and she shouted, Lily! Again, and instead of being met with silence this time, she heard, quote, unquote, me respond, I don't care, and also, go away. She heard this clearly and turned to my twin brother Daniel and promptly asked, What's wrong with her? My twin brother, having also heard, quote, unquote, me respond from upstairs, just shrugged. My sister left it alone and continued with some house chores alongside my brother. A couple of hours later, me and our mom came into the house. Before I could even take another step, Annalise came up to me and angrily said, What was wrong with you earlier? I asked, What? Genuinely confused as to what she was referring to. Annoyed, she rolled her eyes at me and said, You didn't have to give me such attitude earlier. I only asked you to help tidy up. At this point, I was extremely confused and not really being confidential or argumentative person. I started to get upset as that was usually my response to being yelled at. Our mom, who was just as confused as me, asked Annalise what she was going on about. To which Annalise responded, She wouldn't help clean up earlier. I called her name, and she was rude back to me. I looked at her mother with a pleading look and then back at my sister. You're lying. I've been with mom all day at work. My sister, taken aback by this, raised a brow and looked at me then also at our mom who nodded. We left this morning. 
I remember seeing my sister's angry expression fade. She made a look that seemed as though she was deep in thought before telling us what she'd heard and why she assumed I'd been home. My twin brother later, well, later, confirmed that he also heard my voice earlier that day. I always doubted Annalise and Daniel's version of the events that day, as although I was interested in the paranormal, I was still afraid of the thought of a ghost being in our house. Well, the doubt continued until one night I was home alone. It was 2016, and I was 13. I used to play this game that doesn't really exist anymore. Small Worlds. Not that it's relevant. But I'd spend most nights on this game. I was hooked. Being home alone didn't really faze me, though I was a little sketched out as we lived next to these woods. I felt our dog would keep me safe, despite only being this little Jack Russell. Anyway, back to the main point. A few hours into gaming and listening to music, my dog was sat on my bed asleep and I heard the front door downstairs open and somebody walk in. Not thinking anything of it, I shouted downstairs, Annalise? No response. So, I said my other siblings' names, expecting to hear one of them. I shrugged, not thinking much of it, and headed to my room. I picked up my phone and texted my older brother, Blake, asked him if he'd just come in or not as well as sending the same message to Annalise and to my other older sister, Katie, my twin brother, Daniel. Another few minutes passed, and I decided to just go down and check. Nobody's responded to me yet, so... As I get up to the landing, I hear my sister shout up, It's just me, don't worry. And the footsteps descending into her bedroom, which was on the other side of the house downstairs. It was Annalise who I had heard. I felt a little better about it still had a weird feeling that I couldn't explain in my stomach. I decided to go downstairs and make a hot chocolate. While flicking the kettle on, I shouted, Annie, do you want a hot chocolate? I'm making one. No response. A little annoyed, I opened the door and through the small corridor, and I opened her door. Before I could even say anything, I noticed that her room was empty. Freaked out at this point. Thought maybe she just went back out and tried to rationalize everything. I went back to the kitchen. And that's when I saw something that made my heart drop into my stomach. The front door key. It was on the kitchen cabinet. Untouched and unmoved from where my mom had left it. Feeling sick at this point, I tried to handle to the front door. To my horror, it was locked. This freaked me out so much because remember earlier when I said I heard that door open and footsteps come in? Yeah. I thought, screw the hot chocolate. Made a beeline for the stairs, getting back into my bedroom and shutting the door once myself and my pup were safely inside. I went to grab my phone to ring one of my siblings or my mom to my disbelief. All of my siblings had replied saying that they hadn't come home. I called Annalise, wanting this to be some sort of stupid prank that she was trying to pull, as it was her that I heard. To my surprise, she answered. She never answers the phone, by the way. She said, what's wrong? I said rather abruptly, did you just come home? My sister sighed as if I'd asked the stupidest question in the world and replied, Can you not hear the background? With that I listened. It was rather obvious that she was at a party. At this point I began to cry as I told her what had happened. She comforted me to the best that she could. She said she'd make her way home shortly and to just stay in my bedroom. Nothing else happened that night. But when my sisters got home, she asked me if I remembered that day. She told me what happened when I was about seven. And as if I had just unlocked memories I didn't realize were still there, I said, Yeah, I actually do. And we just shared a look of slight disturbance. 
It was after that night I fully believed my sister's version of the events that day that she had heard me, despite me not being home. There were a few other smaller incidents of the same thing. My brother, using the bathroom, realizing there was no toilet paper, had shouted from one of my brothers to go grab him some. He heard my twin brother shout, Okay. And then, well, nothing. And then my brother realized that we were all at school and nobody else was home. He was supposed to be at school too, but he was skipping. And to clarify, in all of these stories, the person whose voice had been heard was not home. I've only told this story once or twice, and I'm usually met with people saying that it didn't happen and that I'm lying. But I know for sure what I heard that night. And I believe my sister and my brother heard what they did, too. However, I'm 18 now. I still can't figure out what this was. If anybody can give me their opinions, or have had a similar experience, I'd be super grateful. It's been sitting heavy on me for years, not knowing. Welcome, seekers of the extraordinary, to Paranormal M. Subscribe and hit the notification bell to stay connected with our latest tales that push the boundaries of understanding. Get ready for a mind-expanding adventure. We hope you're prepared for the unknown. Last Night August 2019 it was about 1 a.m. in the morning. I had just put my phone down and decided it was time to go to sleep. I was staring straight into the corner of my room for a couple of minutes when I saw a black figure, head first, slowly come down from the ceiling. I could only see up to its shoulders before I screamed my lungs out and thrashed around my bed trying to find my phone to shine a flashlight at it. But as soon as I did, it was gone. My throat hurt so bad from my scream, but my brother didn't hear me. Oddly enough, my four-year-old dog didn't react to the figure. I'm not sure if she was just that tired and didn't sense it. But it's safe to say I didn't get any sleep that night. I stayed up talking to a friend on the phone until 4.30 a.m., then decided to bring my oldest dog, Toby, into my room for comfort. Two weeks later, my big boy, Toby, passed away. October of 2019. I had just gotten ready to go to a Halloween party. I was taking selfies in my bedroom mirror, which is located directly under where I saw the black figure two months prior. A few weeks later, I was looking through those selfies when I noticed one of them had a strange, smudge-looking figure in it. In that photo, my four-year-old dog is looking directly at the figure. For a second, I thought my mirror was possibly dirty. But the figure only appeared in one photo. I showed it to friends, and they thought it looked like a face or a dog. I didn't know how to feel about it. Whether to think it was my Toby who had just passed, or something else. I'm not sure how to post photos on here. So if you guys would like to see it, please teach me how to post the photo up. Anyways, last night around 7 p.m. I decided to wash my bed sheets, including my mattress cover. The mattress cover is the type you have to zip onto your mattress. It's sort of easy to unzip and remove, but incredibly hard to put back onto your mattress and zip up especially if you're doing it on your own like I was. During the whole process of washing the sheets and cover and placing them in the dryer, my cat, Nova, had wandered into my room and sat down. Thanks to my poor planning skills, I finished my laundry at about 10.15 p.m. and was now attempting to zip the cover back onto my mattress. 
In doing so, I had to lift the mattress and place it on my knee to hold it up while using the bed slats to support my foot. I was wearing slippers. I was halfway done with the zipping when I heard my cat's bell ring immediately after I felt something gently rub against the bottom of my slipper with enough strength to lift my foot up. It almost felt like when a cat rubs his body against your leg. I yelled, Nova! thinking my cat had gotten under my bed, which she's never done before. I instantly lifted the mattress from my knee and looked underneath it to get her out, but nothing was there. I then looked behind me and noticed Nova had moved from her original spot. She was still facing the same direction away from me, indicating that she hadn't moved at all. I know what you're thinking. Maybe she got out before I looked. But the only thing is Nova is mentally delayed. She's incredibly slow with everything she does. She needs help with the simplest activities. Normally, once she finds a spot to sit, she doesn't move for hours. I honestly just began laughing while still holding the bed up. I was so confused. That really just happened? Kept running across my mind. I'm honestly not sure what to think of everything that's happened so far. I haven't told my parents anything. I'm not sure if they've experienced anything in the house or if it's just me in my room. Knocking on the door late at night. So recently, we've been hearing knocking on the door to our apartment. A couple small knocks. Dogs go crazy. We all get goosebumps. All is quiet for a while. The knocks don't happen every night, and when they do, the time is very inconsistent and often infrequent. I live with my mother, stepfather, three dogs, and a cat in the apartment which is in the basement of my grandmother's house. Before it was finished many years ago, as far back as the 80s and 90s, this basement was my mother's room, and leading up to her moving in at the age of 21, she would hear knocking on the door. It would freak her out, but she blamed it on recurring dreams, or someone in the house possibly messing with her. Recently, my mother heard it again, and it mildly alerted one of the dogs. I feel it is safe to note that we're moving out in a few months. We've just gone into the final stage of securing a house. Something consistent with when my mom heard the knockings at a younger age. Later in the same night after my stepdad woke up for an unrelated reason, they both heard it. And this time, two of the three dogs started barking, the other one woke up. The first knock, according to them, was around 2230, and the second was around 0300. I thought they were trying to mess with me, until today the dogs began to bark around 1400, and later at around 1830, I actually heard the knock myself before they were alerted once again. Yesterday I brought up the old dog camera don't use it anymore, since my mother's working from home due to COVID. We set it up out there. Upon checking today, for some reason it wasn't recording during the first knock. Probably her own fault. And when we checked on the second knock, there was nothing on either side of the door. Update. I think I am a conduit. So I'm not a drinker anymore. I was as a teen, but not so much now. I just get bored of it. Never finish more than one drink before it's like, ah, I don't have to. So I decided to have my one drink as my girlfriend went to bed. We have LEDs on at night pretty much all night, till I sleep, because I operate during the night watching her sugars. 
if she's without a CGM type 1 diabetic. And I have terrible eyesight, so we don't want me getting hurt. I also have other medical issues that could really be, well, I could get really fucked up if I do a misstep or something. She deals with it and is a good sport. So as I was laying in bed, I got the insane urge to get out of bed. I would watch her sleep from the foot of it, and I did for like five minutes. Then I looked beside me, and I just saw this dark but very clearly there in a blue light, just a figure standing shoulder to shoulder with me. I didn't feel threatened, but I felt more calmed. Then all of a sudden I felt fear, hopped into bed and woke up my girl. Shadow was gone. Then a few days pass of no activity, and our cat comes into our room. Her name's Neo. She's this super tame, super calm, lovey old cat. Well, after a short while, she puffs her tail out, gets her hackles up, or the cat equivalent to hackles, and starts hiding behind me and my girlfriend. It starts bugging us, so we're just being affectionate to her. So I go to kick her out. As I near the door, she starts getting upset. So my girlfriend makes an offhand joke about the movie Lights Out. Like, oh, there's going to be someone behind that door like in the movie. And I shit you not, when I opened that door, there was indeed a shadowy figure standing there. The same one I believe as I encountered before. I was very obviously shitting some bricks. But I tried to play it down for my girlfriend. She gets very scared anytime something starts happening. So the cat loses its mind, and we just decide to stay in the room for the rest of the night. We had treatments for her if she went low, so we were set. She went into the bathroom later in the evening, though, and she ran back into me because she heard someone whispering her name to her through the crack under the door. There have been other minor things, like electronics glitching out and making almost cartoonish glitch noises. Sometimes with voices ringing through the static and bugging. I really hope someday we can catch this stuff on film. Maybe while making a YouTube video or while I'm live on Twitch. If so, I'll put it up with any updates I do further. Once again, I respect your opinion if you don't believe me. And I thank you guys for not being rude about it. What a wonderful community there is here in this subreddit. I hope to read some of your stories as well. I would like to point out that it's getting stronger, whether it's in a bad way or a good way. Because now it's consistently showing itself to me. Before, we would catch glimpses. But now it's like, there's something right there. Any ideas yourselves about what's happening here? and why it shows itself and doesn't hurt us. Weird Encounter at the Park Was walking the dog at the local park. It has quite a bit of development around it like some car dealerships, a few plazas across the street, and so on. It's also located a few miles from the local jail. I've taken the dog there quite a bit over the years, sometimes on leash, sometimes off. Encountered a moose or two at night, but never anything beyond that. As I'm following the path back to the main park, I'm on a divided section that is surrounded by fencing on both sides. The car dealership on one, and their storage lot on the other. This stretches pretty much until there's a clearing half a mile ahead, which is really an empty lot that's fairly large. The fencing on both sides is fairly new, but there's a cutaway section on the south side as you approach the park. We're walking west, passing all the dealerships, coming to the clearing where the fencing ends and the big lot opens up. 
I see a Native American fellow walking toward me. He was wearing all black. I think he also had a hat on, fairly skinny, with long hair. He kind of had a smile and a smirk on his face, but overall didn't give me any type of vibe or feeling. I was actually more concerned that the dog would misbehave since he was still young and prone to being overly friendly with strangers. My dog didn't even react. We passed by each other. At that point, I guess I felt a bit sketchy, just wanted to look back for a quick glance. I look back and I don't see him. Mind you, it's not even 20 feet from where we had just crossed. I was a bit puzzled since I felt I should have seen him as soon as I looked back. Naturally, this got me curious. So I go back to venture and see if he's crossed this big open lot, but I don't see anyone. I think, okay, maybe he's hopped the fence. It's in the car lot. But again, I didn't see anything and I definitely didn't hear any fence rattling. At this point, I figure I'm just bugging out and he must have slipped out somewhere and I just didn't check. I head back past the open lot and pretty much back to the park. I again look back again and I see a coyote looking right at me. The dog hadn't reacted this entire time. He's extremely reactive, so I just figured, let's get out of here. Sprint a few feet more and look back again. The coyote hasn't moved and it's still staring. At this point, a lady on a bike is approaching the coyote's way. And I figure this is a good time to end the walk and depart. The Haunted Racetrack At the time, I was 17. My town has an abandoned horse racing track. Now for context, this building is tucked back from the road. It's at the point of falling apart, like can't go upstairs falling apart. Me and my dumb friends, of course, are enticed by this place. So one night we decide to go. After walking to the track from the main road, your body is just filled with the eerie sense. We decided to enter through the main entrance this time instead of the back. Upon walking in the shattered glass doors, there's about five or six of us going this time, me entering last. The glass continued to crunch behind me and my friend Colin. He allowed me to use his name, so Colin. Colin confirmed to me that he heard it too. So we first headed the basement. Down here, not much happens besides some odd bangs and clanks, which could be anything. But the real fear set in when we went back to the main floor. Now, this floor is huge and open, windows on all sides. So we couldn't use lights since we were trespassing. Didn't want anyone to call the cops after seeing the lights. We enter the middle of the floor and stand in the darkness. The only light coming from the moon through the windows. Which is when we started hearing steps above us. Of course, in my head I'm saying, fuck this. But we decide to wait a little longer. This is when shit got scary. We started hearing more and more noises. To one side, we could see a shadow figure walking briskly across, only to be outlined by moonlight. And then to the other side, the same damn thing. But they didn't look like normal people. They didn't move the same way is the only way I can explain it. At this point, it seems like these figures are surrounding us. My fight or flight says, get the fuck out. And so... That's what I told my friends to do. We booked it out of there and didn't stop running until we were back at the car. So now back home, I keep this brief since it's not the paranormal parts. I look up possible deaths at this place. Turns out two girls were murdered on the train tracks behind the building. Some people died working there as well. This is probably about a month later. Only three of us this time. 
Colin again, and I'll say, Jay. We do the typical walking around and dumb provoking. The typical noises of bangs and clanks. So we decided it was too boring and it was time to leave. And that's when Jay says he wants to wait a second alone while we walk back to the car. Not even a minute later, he's sprinting past me. Jay never gets scared. So Colin and I decided, oh fuck, let's run. We get back to the car where Jay tells us he was talking out loud, asking if anyone was there, when he heard a voice behind him. Instinctively, he turned around, and that's when something pushed him from the way he was just facing. Since that instant, I never returned. Partly because I turned 18 and didn't want to ruin my future being caught. Partly because I felt like something evil was there. Haunted Taco Bell When I was 18, I took an evening job at Taco Bell. Well, let me slightly back up. I live in Ogden, Utah. The Taco Bell I had encounters at was the one on Harrison Boulevard. There's only one on that 10-mile long street, so there's no mistaking which one I'm talking about. When I turned 18, the year was 1996, when Taco Bell was still serving the chili cheese burrito. It was right around then that the gordita was introduced. So I worked the closing shift. I was so excited because I loved their food. I learned fast. The guys whose team I just joined were quick to let me know that the store was haunted. I grew up on JW, so the whole ghosts and spirits were instantly dismissed as bullshit, some harmless hazing. They insisted, though, that it was the truth, and would learn soon enough. They weren't wrong. Sleeves of cups and lids would fall off shelving. If you know fast food, you know that mostly packaging and cups are often kept in boxes that they're shipped in. So, no rolling off the shelf. There's no way they'd end up on the ground unless they were intentionally tossed to the ground. At one point, I wanted to challenge the theory. So, I meticulously stacked all the stuff, making sure it was sturdy and not likely to end up on the floor. That shit still ended up on the floor, no matter how I positioned it. Then there were the bathrooms. The hand dryers were flipped on and off randomly. At night until about six, then it would quiet down. Never when working a random lunch shift. Never during the day. Yet, once the doors were locked, my already dying JW sensibilities were basically put on life support after my time there. We were a walk-up friendly establishment. If you don't know what a walk-up is, well, it's what you would do if you had no car, but were really craving a Santa Fe chalupa. Then it took you forever to walk there, so by the time you arrived, Taco Bell was closed. What do you do? You walk up to the only place you can place an order. The only available portal to all that Taco Bell greatness. The drive through This is where the last bit of this takes place. I was sweeping the floor behind the counter. I look up and it's a really old dude. Guessing he looked to be about a hundred. Frail is a word I would say about him. I glance away to prop the broom, begin walking over. Only as I got within six steps of the window do I glance up to see no one standing there. I walk over and I'm searching around for the guy. He was gone though. 24 hours later, I still didn't see how this helpless-looking man could have possibly sprinted around and out of sight in that amount of time it took me to drop the broom and walk over a few steps. If you go work there, you have been warned. Is it possible? 
impossible to get cursed from a movie, or has anybody had the same experience? I just watched Juon slash The Grudge tonight for the first time. Honestly, a great movie, in my opinion. The 80s and early 2000s always feel the most suitable times for me for horror films because of the low-budget animations and shitty quality cameras, especially films made in Japan, as the people there really know how to set the fucked up mood. Anyways, the movie was probably on a scale of 7 or 8.5 for me, the creep factor. Wasn't the worst horror experience I had, but it's probably been numbed down for all the shit I've been put through myself in the past. Just to get a little spooked as the feeling is pretty addicting. After I finished watching it and turned off the TV, I snuck outside through the window for a quick smoke break before bed. Keep in mind that it's 2.30 in the morning. The window I have to go through is above the fridge in the kitchen and leads outside not far from the ground. There's a ledge that's reachable from the window and the ground, so I use that as a median to get myself up and down every time. When I finally got down, I suddenly felt a really fucked up feeling, as if someone or something was out there watching me. I immediately started hearing creaking noises from my neighbor's yard to the left of me but they started far away and started to get closer. I brushed it off and assumed it was the wind and lit my cigarette. Then after the noises stopped, I started hearing the swings and the creak in the neighbor's yard to the other side of me on my right. This is when I finally built up the courage. I decided to peek over the fence. Could have sworn I saw a figure on the swing. Don't know for sure, so I keep my cool, kind of huddled where nobody could see me. Finally, that noise stopped. But once again, I stood back up and swear to fuck, I saw a lady in the back window of the house behind mine to the right. She was staring right at me. I saw her whole body, but it looked like her face was 100% blank. This was not a hallucination because after seeing it, I immediately climbed back through my window. It took me like five minutes just scrambling to get inside. Looked out my window just to see her standing still in the same position, staring at me just as she did before. My mind was racing. I didn't know what to think. Was this a full-blown spirit? Some creepy mannequin that some weirdo decided to leave there. Or was it just her neighbor who saw me sneak inside, not being able to make out my face, thinking I was some intruder? All these thoughts managed to scare the fuck out of me, so I ran upstairs to my room, turned on my Mac, told my friend everything. He was sleeping, so I went back down and checked the window again. She was still there. Weird thing is, as much as she could be a mannequin or something, that could be made out of, well, looks like a woman, but an obvious head was pointed straight in my direction. Gave me eerie ass vibes. Can't sleep one bit. I'm going back down to check it again through the window and brush my teeth. Seventy-plus-year-old haunted house. My grandpa, Nan, and father all passed away inside the house. So there's history here. The first time I experienced something in this house was quite a few years ago. I was with my friends and we were playing a prank on another friend who was sleeping at the time. We were going to barge into the room that he was sleeping in and wave sparklers in his face, make a lot of noise to wake him up. Decided to film this, share it with my other friends. This is when I looked back at the footage the next day while we were preparing to barge into the room. We were trying to be quiet not to wake him. 
there was a very clear voice in the video, a voice that didn't belong to anyone there. It had a very thick American accent and said, get out of my way. None of us heard it in that moment, only in the video. Another time I experienced something in the house was when I was having an argument with my girlfriend. Mid-sentence, all the taps in the house turn on at the same time. Now this could be due to faulty plumbing, but it scared the crap out of both of us enough to stop arguing. Not too sure if this is paranormal or not. I've been touched by something on my neck while washing dishes. I was home alone and washing dishes late at night and felt a cold, almost wet touch stroke the back of my neck. It made the hairs on my neck stand up, sent tingles down my arms. But now we get to the interesting stuff. So because the house is very old, we've had it renovated and now the activity has multiplied. Just last night, I heard someone walking down my hallway stop outside my bedroom. No one was home, just me. Doors are open when I know I've shut them. Doors are closed when I know I've left them open. But the weirdest one has only started in the last few nights. When I'm in bed at night, I hear someone walking on my roof. Not an animal, like human steps. I've rushed outside with a torch to check, thinking there was something or someone actually on my roof. But nothing. This happened every night at around midnight without fail. Just someone on my roof. I'm sure I'm forgetting some stuff over the years, but this house is definitely haunted. But I don't feel unsafe. I feel as if my family are making it known that they're here with me still. I lived in a house that was built by a World War II vet that passed in it. I lived in a house that had a death in the title, was built very close to an old one-room schoolhouse. It was boarded up due to the headmaster shooting all of the students and his wife burying them on the school's property, and hanging himself in the attic. Keep in mind while reading this, I've always had security cameras surrounding my house and pointing towards the street. One night my friend and I had gotten home from a camping trip. We were 16 at the time. We'd been sitting on the couch at around 1 a.m. as we were waiting for some episode of some TV show or something. We had the Apple TV on, and anyone familiar with Apple products knows how easy it is to mirror your device onto another one. I had a monitor in my living room with all my security cameras on a constant stream. They would record 24-7, but stored motion with high sensitivity. Next to the monitor was my TV. The TV glitched over to another image, not the mirroring screen and it was an image directly into the bay window behind us. You could see my CCTV monitor as well as the TV it was playing on. It was us on the couch. The cameras picked up no motion and nobody outside. They were pointed where they were supposed to be. It stayed on for about 10 seconds before the power went out. We went down to the basement to check the breakers trying to decide if calling the police is worth it, even though the cameras didn't pick up anything. Breakers were all on. When we came back upstairs, the power came back. All of the cabinets in the kitchen were open as well as the fridge, and the doors on my entertainment center too. Where we decided not to call the cops, and it wasn't someone hacking into our TV or on the cameras, was all of the windows were still locked, both entryways were dead bolted shut. From then out, I'd come home to cabinets open, lights on that had been off, stuff moved around. We'd hear footsteps throughout the house as well as kids laughing.
We saw the same hitchhiking ghost three times on the same road, years apart. I grew up in North County, San Diego. I don't live there anymore, but this story pertains to the road leading through Lake Hodges, a reservoir and hiking spot in Escondido, California. It's a gorgeous but spooky area. The lake is surrounded by sleepy canyons filled with yapping coyotes and old farmhouses spread out among big lots. There's barely any streetlights on the residential streets cradling this lake. The lake itself has some dark history only locals might know. A high school girl got raped and murdered while jogging along the main trail when I was around the same age. My best friend's sister and her friend found voodoo dolls and knives stuck to some oak trees along the trail once. Creepy shit. San Diego looks like nothing like the Deep South, but Lake Hodges has a similar complex about it. It feels like something unspeakable has happened there. When I was in high school, think 2009, 2011, my friends and I would drive around and smoke cigarettes. We listened to new music and had existential adolescent conversations. Often we would drive around at night. I believe the first time this happened was in late winter of 2010. We were driving down the windy road past the point of separating the dam from the rest of the lake. As we were about to turn a corner, we saw this figure of a tall man standing by the side of the road. He had his thumb up, looking to hitchhike perhaps. His hair was wet and black, and the best adjective I can conjure for him is slimy. He was wearing this wet trench coat and his face was... Juan, W-A-N, his face was Juan. When her headlights met his eyes, they looked vacant yet melancholy, staring off into space like a zombie. But still there was something soulful about them, can't explain it. It's been over a decade so I've had plenty of time to reflect on the strange sorrow I witnessed in him. Anyway, he vaguely resembled a drowned pirate. We were all terrified. A few months later, same thing. We saw the same figure hitchhiking a bit further down the road. This time we were even more mortified. A hitchhiker in the same place in the same clothes, twice. A year or so later, I'd returned from college for spring break and was catching up on my same friend, barreling down the road. Somehow, the topic of the hitchhiker came up. My friend told me that she had just seen him again recently at a different spot down the same road at night. We commented on how we knew he was a ghost, or just not human. My main questions are still... Why would a hitchhiker always be looking for a ride along the same road, always at night, and seemingly only in the early part of the year? And how the hell is it so obvious he's dead? Odd Encounter in My Old Flat We had moved into a flat in a completely new area when I was around 13. Nothing we experienced was immediately, oh my god, it's a fucking ghost. But they were just a little odd encounters that got us questioning how exactly they would happen. The quote unquote odd experiences started on the day after the move. It was just me and my mother. We were sitting down watching TV. My mother stood up to go to the toilet as I remained sitting down. 
After about a minute of her being in the bathroom, I hear her shout, Why have you just walked into my room? But I hadn't. I was still sat on the sofa watching TV. Hadn't moved at all. When she came back, she told me that she had heard footsteps walking down the corridor and into the bedroom on the right. This could be explained logically, though, as her downstairs neighbors were quite loud and we could hear them talking and banging around at some points. So it wouldn't be a surprise if we heard their loud footsteps, too. But I just thought I'd mention it anyways. The second encounter was when I was cooking. If I remember correctly, this was a couple of months after we moved in and I was helping my mother make dinner. I was in charge of making the cheese sauce. I'm just there, whisking away, until I turned around for a few seconds to grab my drink, check my phone. As I was turned around, the whisk somehow managed to flip itself out in the saucepan and onto the floor, which confused both myself and my mother. Now, me and my mother never saw it happen, but we were both confused at how strange it would manage to do that. I'm sure I didn't knock it with my hand or arm because surely it would have come with me. I didn't leave it on the top of the saucepan. I left it leaning toward the side of it, inside of the sauce. It was almost as if something picked it up, dropped it on the floor. Could this be logically explained? Before I move on to my main odd encounter, I thought I'd mention two little things that also used to happen. Whenever I was alone, I'd always see something out of the corner of my eye, as if something was standing behind me or watching me. It would disappear as soon as I would turn around. Again, it could just be a shadow of myself or something, maybe something else around or just where I was standing, but I thought I'd mention it anyways. Things would also go missing in that flat, randomly turn up in the most random of places, or in the spot where we originally left it. For example, we'd lose cutlery or pieces of clothing, can't find it anywhere. We give up and a week or so later, it's back. Is this a normal thing that happens? We're just too blind to see the right thing in front of us? Or was Casper messing around with our things? Sorry that this post is already a bit too long, but one more story and I'm finally done. My terrible grammar probably doesn't help with how long it is. <laughs> this is something that only happened to me. It only happened once, but it's something that still keeps me up at night. I was around 14 when this happened. And it was around 1 a.m. or 2 a.m. and I was getting ready to go to sleep. Since my sleep schedule was totally fucked back then, still is a little bit now, I turned off my TV and turned around to face the wall. After about a minute of me turned around, it felt as though something was touching and moving my hair around. I just assumed it was because I turned around too quickly. I then began to feel really cold almost as if I went cold-blooded for about 20 seconds. Then everything went back to normal again. I heard a little bit of movement in my room. Then all of a sudden I hear something whisper breathing into my ear, almost like an exhale, and I immediately shot up, seeing nothing but the darkness. Thought I heard it again, so I immediately turned my TV back on. Didn't go to sleep until 5 in the morning. The hair touching and me feeling cold could all be explained logically, but I find it hard to find a logical, well, a logical explanation for the breathing I supposedly heard. It couldn't have been the wind since my window and vent weren't open. It wasn't my mother or her boyfriend since both her bedroom doors were shut, so... Was I just overtired and hearing things? I don't know. I still get the chills and I'm terrified to go to sleep almost every night now, thinking perhaps I'll hear it again.
my imaginary friend. So when I was three or four, I had this imaginary friend named Alice. I used to play with her 24-7. I used to take up biscuits for her, my mom, and make a plate of food for her whenever we were eating. We were just best friends and my parents thought nothing of it. They just thought it was normal. Because it is normal for children to get imaginary friends at some point. But some weird things started to happen. The first thing my mother told me is that one day she left a baby monitor on upstairs. For whatever reason, I'm not sure. It started to pick up white noise, as if something was trying to communicate. You would have thought that maybe it would have been connecting with the other baby monitors in the area. But she told me that our neighbors had no babies, so there'd be no need to have a baby monitor on. It was probably just a minor glitch in the baby monitor, so no big deal. But it is slightly weird. Another thing that used to happen is that whenever I would be downstairs or at school, my parents would just be chilling upstairs. They would hear footsteps. At least footsteps upstairs. And it would either sound like somebody was playing in my room when I wasn't there, or walking down the hallway. Obviously, they would go up to check, but there would be nobody there. They were just basic things. Nothing too drastic. You could put them down as normal things, but the next thing I'm about to tell you is quite creepy. One night my mother was putting me down to bed. She tucked me in. She was about to leave the room. But as she was about to leave the room, I said, Good night. And it genuinely freaked her out. When she asked me about it, I went on to say that that wasn't me, that was Alice. So I'm not sure what went on there, but I thought that it was a joke back then. But, you know, another thing I should mention is that I was a very bad sleeper and also a very bad behaved child whilst living in that house. I used to almost sleep in my parents' bed every night or have my mother stay with me until I fell asleep. I was just a different kid, according to my parents. We left the house when I was about seven or eight, can't fully remember, and before leaving my parents used to joke about, aha, uh -huh, don't forget to pack Alice. But when we left the house, I never spoke about Alice ever again. I also behaved better and slept better too. It was as if I was a different child. My mom once asked me about Alice, and she said stuff like, oh, where's Alice? Don't you play with her anymore? Have you got a new friend? And apparently, I looked at her blankly and said, What do you mean? Alice doesn't live with us. Alice lives back at the old house. I think it's strange. Another thing I do want to quickly mention is that I don't remember anything about this. I don't remember anything about Alice at all. I remember the house so well. I remember everything about the house. I have memories about that house, too. I only, well, the only thing I don't remember is Alice. I don't remember anything about her. But maybe that was how it was meant to be. I don't know. We made them mad by moving. I grew up in a large farmhouse in Indiana. The house and 200 plus acres of farmland had been passed down through the family. It was like this since its original settlement of the area by my pioneer ancestors. Things would happen here and there, but everything hit the fan when my family hit hard times and we were forced to sell the house and the majority of the property. In the last three months before moving out, the activity became so bad that it's making me cry writing this. First, it started with growling. If you sat at the dining room table, the chair facing the entryway, he 
You could hear distinct growling like a dog. My sister first noticed it sitting at the table with me doing homework. You could only hear it if you sat in that chair. Not stand, not next to, had to be in that chair. My sister looked up at me and started scolding me, saying I didn't let the dogs out. I told her, I don't hear it, and the dogs were outside. I had to get up and open the basement doors and the entryway door to prove her that the dogs were outside. She talked about it all the time, that she could hear it. Then she stopped sitting in that chair. Me, being the little opportunist, decided once to sit in her chair at the table alone. Ten seconds and I could hear the growling, low, mean, animalistic growling. The feeling of someone watching from the entryway where the sound was. Then lights and TVs would turn on by themselves. Things moving from where you left them and general awful feelings. One day after school, I took a left over out and meet the dogs. Excuse me. <laughs> One day after school, I took left over meat out to the dogs. My personal dog was a Pomeranian, small, cute, not a mean bone in her. She was very submissive and always wanted to play and cuddle. I saw her lying on her stomach, seeming to be sleeping. She was facing a fence. I went up to her and knew that when she didn't respond to her name, something was wrong. I went to pick her up and couldn't. She didn't budge because one of the fence stakes was skewered through her mouth deep into the ground so she was pinned. It wasn't through her head. It was as if someone got her mouth open, pulled the stake out, and speared her through her tongue and bottom jaw into the ground. I swear this is true. We didn't have any neighbors and I don't know anyone sick enough to spear a five-pound friendly dog into the ground. The pen was also in her backyard right up next to the house. I screamed and was hysterical to the point that my sister called my mom who was working and sent my grandma over to the house to see and comfort me. She was in complete shock. Words can't describe the hurt this caused me. To lose my dog this way was seemingly no reason. Things continued and started only staying in the house for a few days a week. My older sister was there alone sometimes to care for the pets while we went with my mom to another state where she was working. My sister would call my mom, losing her mind. Doors and cabinets would either all be open by the time she got home from school. Police didn't know what to do or think. There was no signs of break-ins. Plus, at this point, we all knew it wasn't anything normal. On the second to last right in the house, my mom, well, I think they meant night. On the second to last night at the house, my mom had me go around and make sure all of the lights were off before bed. Again, the house was pretty big, and we had been parking and cleaning all day. There was a small TV in the bathroom off the dining room. I found it turned on to TV fuzz, but no lights on. I turned on the light, walked over, turned off the TV, got to the doorway, and it was back on. Fucking ran up to my mom and grandma, who didn't want to hear it anymore. Insisted I go back and make it stay off. My grandma came with me this time, and sure enough, I did it again as soon as we turned to walk out, and it was on again. Grandma told whatever was there to stop at the name of Jesus Christ our Lord and the TV obeyed this time and stayed off. The last night in the house was when we all experienced the raw power of whatever was mad at us. Things felt weird going up to bed. I think about 10 to 15 minutes went by and I couldn't sleep. I could feel something about to happen. Suddenly, all the kitchen cabinets downstairs went nuts, banging open and closed. My older sister came into my room and was like, See? Come sleep in my room. 
we all ran back to her room, cabinet still going. Then they stopped. We heard my mom talking down there. Both got up to go to her. She was sitting in a chair in the kitchen, looked up at us like we were interrupting her. She was talking to whatever was there. She believed her angry family, telling them why we had to leave and scolding them for making things so hard for us. I didn't think my mom even believed in ghosts until then. I was in awe of her strength to face them like they weren't fucking ghosts, entities, or demons, what have you. We left scared, still talk about it together, but it's hard. We can't forget, but I don't know if we would want to. I've been obsessed with ghosts in the afterlife since leaving. Mostly just to validate it to myself that we're not having some crazy family hysteria episode. My village is haunted. I come from a small fishing village. It's in Alaska. Our residents never surpass 400 people living in the village at a time. Back in the 30s, the village was relocated due to constant flooding. In our new village, we have homes, a school, two tribal offices, a boys and girls club, a post office, a church, and a graveyard. The graveyard sits on top of a big hill down by the beach, away from the rest of the village. Recently, we had to expand the graveyard because we were running out of plots. This is relevant to what I'm going to say. My village is haunted. Not just one or two houses or the school, the whole village. The spirits wander and have been seen walking up and down the roads, going into buildings or homes. Per every small town, everyone has a story. Some hear babies crying in the woods, hear their dead relatives calling to them, see dead relatives walk past them, disappear just as they catch up to them. Like everyone else in my village, I've had a couple of encounters that will stay with me. I've told them here on Reddit. What I can't understand, however, is why they're wandering the earth. I have a couple of theories I thought I'd post here for some feedback. Theory 1 After being forced to adopt Russian Orthodox Christianity during the Russian colonization, I don't think my ancestors are pleased about the whole being buried for all eternity bit. Maybe we're not supposed to be buried. Theory 2. They have unresolved issues and don't know that they're dead. They seem to be going on about their day, not attempting to reach out or see us. Theory 3. My village is cursed. My grandma tells me of her mom's uncle, who was a shaman. She said he tried to curse a man, but my grandmother's brother got in the way. My grandma's brother drowned at 12 years old. The shaman was so upset he cursed the man's entire village to always be thirsty. My grandma said her friend from that village always chews on ice, which makes her question that curse to this day. I wonder if that curse ended up cursing my whole village for decades to come. I talk about the curses because recently we've had two to four deaths a year for a few years now. The Screaming Hills Per usual, I brought up the topic of ghosts. All the adults around the campfire retold their own experiences, but my dad kept his story to himself. You'll get chicken poop, he would say when we begged him to tell a story. In the end, he told us. 
The story takes place in the old days, when there was no electricity in our village, and everybody lived in shacks deep in isolation. At the bottom of a large hill there were a few houses in a sandy beach that ran for miles in either direction. My dad was just a child then. The sun was setting and lanterns lit the houses. The kids were laughing and yelling so loud the adults told them to quiet down. My dad and the rest of the kids continued yelling and laughing. I heard about that blood-curdling scream from over the hill. The kids went silent immediately, stood there, frozen. They listened for a moment, when the trees on the hill started moving, as though something big was coming their way. The kids ran inside, their faces full of fright. When the adults asked them what was wrong, they didn't say anything. The adults didn't hear anything except for the kids playing. My dad said, there's an old burial plot at the top of the hill. None of us got any sleep that night. Tell me your creepy experiences from Alaska. Ghost. I've lived in Alaska my whole life. Half of my life has been in my secluded village. The other half has been in the city. I ask this question because I want to know what more there is. Most of my hauntings have happened in my village. The most recent ghost sightings I've had is when I was working as a maid for a hotel near the mall on the south side of Anchorage. While I was looking for the girl who was training me, I walked into the main room where the beds were. I turned back and started walking to the door to leave when I saw somebody, a whole person, walk past the bathroom door. I immediately stopped, thought maybe she just came in and started in the bathroom. I peered inside the bathroom, didn't see her. I looked in the shower. No one was in there. Leaving would have been impossible since there was only the door, which I was blocking, and the tub windows that opened out. They were closed. I got spooked, left immediately since my fellow housekeepers told me that there was a spirit of a man who watched the maids clean, and if he didn't like you, he would attack. Usually stays on the third floor. I was working in the first at this time. I'm not 100% sure if it was him, but I didn't want to find out. UFO Anyway. The only other story I have are very short, and they're in my childhood. Due to traumatic instances I've experienced, I cannot remember most of my childhood. Just bits and pieces. But I do remember seeing a huge metal thing. It was hovering up in the night sky. It had propellers like a helicopter. And I would have thought it was a helicopter if it hadn't been for the fact that it was storming like hell that night. I'm talking 40 to 50 foot waves crashing on the bank side. Wind and rain that soaked my hoodie within minutes. I'm not sure what it was, but my friend and I were standing on the bank looking at the inlet for the Loch Ness Monster. Yeah, I know. This is when this thing showed up and hovered above up. It was close enough we couldn't see pretty much the whole thing, but far away that we couldn't touch it. Anyway, we both screamed and ran back to the boys and girls club where we told an adult. He said it was a weather balloon. All I remember is that it was made of steel and it was hovering. Never saw it again after that. Boogeyman My brother and I decided to sleep in our old brother's room. He would keep this room pitch black. Couldn't see anything at all. No light. We slept in there watching a movie, 
The TV turned off by itself after not being in use for a while. I woke up feeling my brother get up and walked out of the bedroom to the bathroom where I saw the light turn on. And dim as he closed the door, my feet were blazing hot. So, I did what you're never supposed to do. I hung them off the end of the bed. As they were cooling, I thought there's no such thing as the boogeyman or whatever. I laid there staring at nothing. I was waiting for my brother to come back so I could sleep in peace. I felt a hand swear on my dog's grave. A hand with fingernails. Fingernails. Scratching the sole of my foot very quickly. I hid underneath the covers and started begging God or whoever to make it go away. I waited maybe 30 more seconds before I poked my head out, then heard the toilet flush and the door finally open. Never told my brother since he was at the side of the bed, unknowingly protecting me from that thing. I was up against the wall, kept my limbs inside the blanket all night. I heard a weird, creepy song on an unmarked cassette in my dad's attic. My mom and dad are typical boomers. They were hoarders of old vintage collectibles, toys and books, and in particular, music records. This one time in our attic, we decided we were going to clear out a lot of old, dusty, moth-eaten records to make some space in the attic. We thought we'd donate them to charities. It was during that time that my older brother and I came across a cardboard box. In it was their dad's old Sony Walkman. If you've ever seen Marvel's Guardians of the Galaxy, you know the main hero, Peter Quill, otherwise known as Star-Lord, carries a Walkman that he listens to all the time when he's fighting the bad guys. Well, it turns out that model Walkman is the very same one my dad owned. The Sony Walkman TPS L2. And it was right there in a box in our dad's attic. It was even the same color as well. Funny thing is, my dad thought it was... Funny thing is, my dad thought his was broken since he was, well, since only one of the earphones was working, and thus, he kept it tucked away in a box and hadn't used it in decades. We soon found out that we all had to do was just replace the headphones with, you know, one of our own ones. Something which he had never, really, never really occurred to him. And hey, presto, we got it working again, good as new. A lot of the tapes we found in there were typical 70s and 80s rock bands. The Eagles, Iron Maiden, ZZ Top, Aerosmith, The Pretenders, and Rush. We were actually blown away by the sound quality of the old 70s Walkman. These things were definitely high fidelity, and exceptional to listen to even now. By this point we were both completely distracted with our original task of clearing out the attic. The coolest thing about it was is that you could connect two headphones into it so two people could listen at the same time, making it a far more sociable listening experience than those smartphones we all have now. But even more awesome was we found there was this little thing called a hotline button, where if you pressed it, you could actually speak to the other person over the sound of the music. This was by a microphone that was inside the device. When we found that out, we just kept laughing, all the while using it to communicate over the songs. It was amazing to us that they'd even thought to include a feature like that in it. It just seemed like such a cool gadget to have for such an old toy. They certainly didn't make stuff like this anymore. While we were goofing around, we eventually saw that there were six blank TDK cassette tape boxes most of which were unmarked, which we examined out of curiosity. The ones that were, well, however, had black marker pen writing on them. Now, since the original Walkman did not have a record feature, 
nor could it connect to radio. These tapes must have been either made on another device or given to him by somebody else. The first three unmarked tapes were literally just blank empty tapes with nothing on them. The fourth one, dated January 25th, 1981. It was a recording of the Super Bowl match between the Raiders and the Eagles. The next one was a short excerpt of a recording from KISS Radio dated on, excuse me, K-I-I-S Radio, dated on June 5th, 1983. Nothing much on it, just some random news segment. Nothing out of the ordinary so far. And then there was the sixth tape. It was cryptically labeled MS. It had no date on it. Not knowing what to expect and feeling too bored out of our minds and curious to put it down, we just unthinkingly put it in the device and listened to it. At first, the tape was silent, although there was noticeable background hum. Like a lot of vintage tapes, it sounded like it must have had high DC bias. We thought at first this was another blank tape, but then we started to hear a person breathing heavily. Then after a short while, a song came on. We scoffed. It was pretty standard for producers, especially those that experimented with avant-garde, to include ambience and strange noises to add atmosphere to their songs. The song we heard was strange, it sounded off-key and tuneless, it almost sounded like a song, and at the same time it wasn't. It was so weird to listen to we literally just stood there, weren't sure what to do. We didn't know exactly what it was that we discovered. We began to feel strangely unsettled, and yet, for reasons I don't understand, we chose to ignore our instincts and instead kept on listening to it. Have you ever heard a song that made you feel like you've already heard it before? But you aren't sure where it's from? Like in a dream from very long ago as a child. Because that's the feeling I got when I listened to it. It brought up strange feelings and obscure memories in me that I didn't even know were real or not. Unfortunately, while I remember most of the details of what went on that day, I just cannot describe the song in any meaningful detail at all. I can't replicate its melody on piano or guitar, or even sing it. It's like Schrodinger's cat in a way. It's there in my head, and yet it isn't. The only thing I can recall with certainty is that I felt very strange sensations upon hearing it, ones that made me distinctly uncomfortable. We were both so mesmerized by what we were hearing that we didn't even use the hotline button to communicate over it. We just stood there in eerie silence the entire time. Another thing I can recall about the song is that it was long and monotonous too. I can't remember how long, but to us it felt like it might have been 10 minutes, maybe 20 minutes, even half an hour. We didn't have a clock or a wristwatch on, so we have no reliable evidence. And besides, it's not like we were counting. Then at some point, possibly due to pure coincidence, we swear we have no idea how this had happened, but the power and the lights had suddenly gone out. We were now alone, listening to this freaky psychedelic tune in the dark. But we were so engaged in what we were listening to, we didn't even notice. There is only one line I think I can remember hearing from the song, and it's pretty messed up now that I take a look back on it. I don't know if I remember it correctly, but I think it went something like this. I can hear the voice of God. He says it's time. Time for what? What kind of song was this? 
It was as though we had stumbled upon some freaky, cultish, psychedelic program in our dad's tape collection. I had no idea what it was. But what I did know is that my skin had gone completely cold and white for reasons I couldn't describe. And which just wouldn't make any sense for me at that time. I felt like something truly awful was happening. I got this really disturbing and unnatural feeling like we had found something we were definitely not meant to. Then eventually, my brother and I were caught off guard by the loudest, most horrifying, most agonizing, torturous, fucking loud screeching we had ever heard. It was just so sudden, so out there, and so painful to listen to. We panicked, dropped the Walkman on the ground, breaking both the Walkman and the tape inside with it. Suddenly, the lights were now back on. And soon after that, our mom came in, asking us what the hell had happened. She was angry that we spent around 30 minutes listening to music and not helping with the sorting of the old stuff. When she saw the broken Walkman on the floor, she was even more furious. We just smashed one of our dad's favorite childhood toys. In the days since then, I asked dad exactly what kind of tape it was that we had heard. He said he had no idea. He remembered that the recorded tapes were given to him by a friend, but he had no idea what that MS tape was, much less what the initials could stand for. He'd certainly never listened to it and was completely surprised when we told him our story. Mostly because he still cannot remember how or where he even got the tape. We have nothing more to go on, really. And since the cassette and Walkman were both broken, in any case, we had no choice but to get rid of both the Walkman and the broken tape. We also handed the remaining ones to the charity shop. Now, I would normally chalk this story up as being nothing more than two young idiots goofing around and hearing an old, weird tape in the dark. Surreal, edgy music, maybe. But something very strange things would be happening to me after that. First off, the song in question, now and then over the past few months, I swear I've been hearing parts of it over and over over again in my dreams. Some of the dreams ranged from peaceful and calming to frightening and absurd. It feels like there's some ghostly specter chasing after me. I've never listened to any song that's given me this kind of profound psychedelic experience. And what's so frustrating at the moment is that I just cannot describe it or sing it or try to hum it for any of you here. I can't even replicate it on MIDI software or music notation. All I remember is that one line. Even now, I'm amazed that after hearing a song that left such a vivid, forceful impression on me, I still can't remember anything about it. I've typed in the lyrics on Google and so far found absolutely nothing. It's like my memory of the song has been completely erased. Also, my brother for some reason never talks about it. When I reminded him about the tape, the one time we listened to it, he kept asking me if I was okay and that he swears I was exaggerating, end quote, or that he simply doesn't remember it. If the incident rattled him anything like it did with me, and he's not showing it. And that's not all either. Recently he's changed. I swear, he's become different. He no longer talks to me. In fact, he no longer talks to any of us. A lot of the time he just seems like he's someplace else mentally. If you've ever looked into the eyes of someone during a schizophrenic episode, you know how their pupils dilate and look like they're phasing out of reality. I swear I've noticed this happening in him. I don't want to sound like I'm being ridiculous, suggesting that a haunted tape did this to him. 
but he was certainly not like this before that day. On the outside, everything seems to be all right. He's still walking the dog. He still drives off to work. He still helps cook dinner with the rest of us. But most of the time, he just seems vacant and distant, like he's not actually there. I don't know what's going through his head or what's happened to him. Weird as fuck closet. I live in a modest house. I live there with my mom, her boyfriend, and my brother. I'm the only one in the family who truly believes in ghosts. We have two cats and a dog, a variety of animals in my room, three bedrooms, two bathrooms. The house doesn't have much history. It has only had three families living in it before us. Back in September, Mom noticed one of our cats, Wilbur, who would always stand in front of and pull open a closet in our laundry room. It had a large machine of some sort that helped power the house. Very small, not any places to hide that might entice a cat to explore it. The day after she pointed this out, I walked past the closet to get to the garage. Goosebumps grew all over my body. I'll admit that this could be contributed to my slight paranoia about it, but it felt more severe than other times I've gotten chills over something scary. Things progressed over the next few weeks. I went outside through the front door one morning. Everyone was either gone, at work, or asleep. To clean something for my animals, and when I went to open the door again, it was locked. It's the kind of lock that you twist to the side, like a control for a stovetop, and it requires a bit of force to turn. When my mom came to answer the door after about ten minutes, she said her ring alarm never went off, and the doorbell only rang once, even though I pressed it multiple times. In my room there are two art pieces that my grandma made, and let me keep after she passed. They're made of planks of wood and crushed soda cans, and curly hair made out of what I can only assume to be very thin metal. Sometimes when my boyfriend is drilling holes in the wall, the hair on one of these quote-unquote people trembles. Though it can't be heard over the sound of the drill. However, in the middle of the day, one strand of hair started shaking much harder than the other times. It wouldn't stop for a good hour, despite there being no drilling going on. After those weeks of weird things happening, it came to a climax. Wilbur was almost screaming at the closet door, pulled it open constantly, even after we'd close it. None of the pets in my room came out to get treats which they get each day at about the same time. They only came out to get sips of water. When I saw them, they looked sluggish. My phone also went to shit. My keyboard would randomly start lagging. The charger I'd been using for almost a month gave out on me. And at one point, the phone restarted itself without being manually turned off. I still have a lot of issues with it to this day, from getting overheated quickly to having to do a total restart at least once a week to keep things running. Our usual reliable Wi-Fi, usable, excuse me, our usually reliable Wi-Fi has been very poor since that day. So yeah, maybe there's something there, or maybe I'm making a mountain out of a molehill. But all of this just seems very suspicious. Thanks for hanging out. See ya.
greetings from the mysterious depths of Paranormal M. Subscribe. Turn on notifications to embark on a journey through our latest uncharted tales. Brace yourself for the unexpected. We promise it'll be a ride worth taking. I experience intense physical pain that happened simultaneously with my grandpa's death. A couple years ago in March, I was traveling with my dad. I was traveling to tour a college that I'd be going to in the fall. A couple of months before this, I'd lost my grandma to Alzheimer's. Both her and my grandpa had very progressed Alzheimer's and dementia. My grandpa needed the support, so my mom was staying with him in a different state while my dad and I flew to visit a school. We were on the plane, close to descending. I was feeling fine, not stressed, listening to a podcast. My dad was across the aisle from me. I suddenly felt immense pain and pressure from within my jaw, the left side of my face. It was sharp, constant, and felt like I needed to pop my jaw, but couldn't move it at all. I had no idea what was going on, and had never felt this before. I could only try to breathe through the pain and wait for it to pass. It took a couple of minutes before it could sort of begin to subside. I was very scared. It occurred before and while the plane began to land. I considered it to be pressure related to the plane, but it was too localized and unique. Couldn't even turn my head to let my dad know something was happening to me. I was wondering if I was having some sort of seizure on the side of my face. After we landed, I considered trying to find a coffee stand, try to get a cup of ice to hold against my face, but no luck. Within an hour, it was gone. As we were driving to the school, my mom had let us know that my grandma had passed. Between us getting off the plane and what time I imagined it took for my mom to gather herself to let us know, I believe this all happened within the same hour. I called her. She believes that I felt pain as a signal of his death, which I believe as well. I've found studies saying this isn't entirely uncommon, but I've struggled to find other personal stories like mine. Terms like empath, bereavement, hallucination, and sixth sense come up when I try to Google the possible term. Anytime I begin to feel strange pain at an intense level, I think of calling my loved ones to make sure that everything's okay. Nothing like this has ever happened since. While I don't know what specifically was the cause of death for my grandpa in the moment, I wonder if it involved any pain similar to what I felt. I would love to hear any similar stories or thoughts on what happened to me. Possible Paranormal Encounters in Shaw AFB, South Carolina This happened on Shaw AFB in 2005. My now ex-husband was an E6 and he worked nights on the F-16. I would be home overnight for our two sons, aged five and two. First, I need to describe the house. It was a long hallway with rooms on either side. Partially open floor plan from the dining room to the kitchen, where there was a half wall for part and then a whole wall. From my bedroom door, I could see the back door straight through the dining room and part of the kitchen. We had a large rack. It was by the back door where we stored dry goods. Military housing never has enough, you know, storage space, in my own opinion. 
One morning I was woken up by a noise in the kitchen. I jumped out of bed afraid my younger son was getting into trouble. He's 18 now and still a P-I-T-A. I didn't grab my glasses and without them I am legally blind. I can see colors and rough shapes. That's it. I looked toward the kitchen and saw what looked like a man in an Air Force uniform. Again, I can barely see, so I'm going off of color and shape. The figure is holding a box and facing the rack. Of course, I assume that this is my husband, and I say, Hey, you want me to cook you something? The figure moves so that it's facing me. The box drops to the floor and the figure moves to the part of the kitchen that I can't see. So, my ex-husband was very unpredictable and emotionally volatile. So my assumption right here is that he's mad at me for something, again, and I'm going to need to deal with this attitude. I turn back to my night table and get my glasses. Then I walk to the kitchen. This entire action takes maybe 30 seconds. It's a small house. I'm talking as I walked to the kitchen. Did something. You know, something happened at work. You know, to defuse the situation. No response. I turn into the kitchen and there's no one there. It would not have been possible for anybody to get to the back door without me hearing it. Because the door squeaked. Again, this was only 30 seconds, tops. I walk and glance through the living room, which is also empty. Then I look at the time on the microwave. 06.17. My husband didn't get home until 8. Also, a box of Annie's mac and cheese was on the floor on the front rack. This happened 16 years ago, and I still try to sort it out in my head. I don't believe in ghosts. I can say we had a few other uncomfortable incidences in that house. There were two bathrooms, a full one and then a small end suite to the master bedroom, which was our older son's room. He had toys and stuff. We didn't need the space. He refused to use the end suite. He said it was creepy. One time I was taking a shower in there. Can't remember why I wasn't using the normal bath. And I saw movement outside the curtain. I glanced out and I swear I saw a man in a uniform looking through the window, then dropping real quick. I screamed for my husband and he ran outside. No footprints or anything. I ran a daycare out of our house and occasionally would hear stuff moving around in the daycare area, especially at night. That stopped after we got a dog, so I can't rule out South Carolinian giant water bugs playing with the pretend kitchen. I don't believe in ghosts or the paranormal, but I know what I saw and heard. I was wide awake by the time I was in the doorway and saw him, which rules out hypnogosia. I don't know what I experienced. I'm okay without knowing. I thought this would be of interest for others, though. I've not shared this story before. Grandpa Bob My grandfather died after a brutal battle with pancreatic cancer when I was 17. When I was 21, I became pregnant with my elder son. We lived in a tiny Section 8 apartment in a rural town and had little decoration, no familiar pictures at all. My son was born with a defect, I guess you could call it, in his ears. Didn't hear very well. 
while mostly communicated with signed English. Once he was around one years old, I would hear him at night chattering away. Couldn't understand what he was saying, but he would laugh and it really sounded like a conversation, appropriate pauses. One day my sister-in-law and I were sitting on the couch. My son was on my lap. As I showed her a memory book my mom had made me for Christmas. On the second page were several photos of my grandparents and great-grandparents from both sides. They were labeled. But let me remind you, my son was about 14 months old. I flip to this page. He laughs, points at my maternal grandfather in his wedding photo, and clear as anything says, Look, Grandpa Bob. Yes, his name was Robert, and yes, we called him Bob. As a bonus, my second son also chattered in his room at night. I asked him once who he was speaking to. He says, Gamma Ruth. She says she's sorry. My dad's mother was named Ruth, and she was a very, well, for lack of a better term, unkind lady. I have no photos of her and have never spoken about her. Even if I had, I didn't call her Ruth, just Grandma. I am an atheist. I do not believe in the soul. I have no explanation for these occurrences. I leave my mind open, and if I ever have incontrovertible evidence, I guess, I am willing to believe. ETA. A lot of comments on how early my son spoke. Both of my kids spoke fluently very early. With the elder son, he was hard of hearing, so of course his speech wasn't clear. However, he did use signed English fluently. He was also in speech therapy because of the hearing deficit, which obviously increased his fluency. He's now 21, so to be honest, he may have been 15 or 16 months, I'm not positive. I know we moved to our first station when he was 17 months, and this happened a while before we moved. I failed the rules of the Ouija board and may be haunted forever. I was 15 when I decided to start messing around with the Ouija board. It was something the neighborhood parents would drill into our heads to not play with. As kids, we were intrigued. It was my best friend, a 14-year-old female, my neighbor, a 14-year-old male, and myself, a 15-year-old female, playing it one evening. That's when my neighbor thought it was a big joke and made fun of us for playing. He tried to light the Ouija board on fire. It refused to flame. It just wouldn't burn at all. My best friend and I thought he was being crazy, but we didn't understand the severity it caused us. About a month later, I was sitting in my mother's room with my best friend and my little sister listening to music. Because my mother had the best sound system in the house, she was gone for the night. My sister was sitting on my mom's bed. My friend's back was facing the window, and I was facing my friend, but couldn't help but notice a blue man standing outside my mom's bedroom window. My friend seen my demeanor change, and when she looked out the window, I seen the color drain from her body as she started to cry. I left my mother's room with my friend, we locked ourselves in the only room without windows until my mom arrived home. We assumed it was a peeping Tom for the longest while after this. Now fast forward to another two to three months after that happened. 
My neighbor called me, and my friend was in a panic saying that he needed to come over. It was an emergency. So we told him to come over immediately, and he did. He explained to us that him and his friends, not the best group of individuals, but given their age, the decisions kind of make sense, unfortunately, decided to light an abandoned car on fire. He said he took a picture of it engulfed in flames to send his friends as a joke, saying, Campfire. When he revealed the photo to me, my friend, she again lost the color in her body and started to cry. I immediately noticed in the blue of the flame that same blue man that was outside of my mother's bedroom window. I could move, speak, or feel anything. He questioned us on what it was, and the only one who could make out the words for us was my little sister as she told him, that's the blue man that was outside my mom's window. Ghost Kid, Weird Experience. So a few years ago, I was 10 or 11. During one family gathering, my dad and his siblings, my aunt and uncles, talked about their past experience in the old house they were renting way back when. Well, when they didn't have kids. Me and my cousins. They talked about this ghost kid that's in the house running around and playing, making fun of them once in a while too. I can tell you the detailed story about the experience with this ghost kid, but let's focus on mine. They keep talking about how the kid also lived in the same old house and died in the house, and the kids didn't receive proper burial. Anyway, I didn't believe in this ghost kid. Didn't believe he existed until this experience of mine happened a few years ago. Me and my younger sister visited my cousin's house, otherwise known as the old house that they rented way back then. Since we lived in the same neighborhood, this cousin of mine was only four years old at the time. It was only me, my cousin, my younger sister, and my aunt that was in the house. So we hung out and played until lunchtime. My aunt had to go out to buy us some food, so me and my sister had to babysit our little cousin for a bit. And here's where it gets weird. We were in my little cousin's room. My younger sister was in the bathroom taking a dump. I realized that we forgot to turn off the TV because I can hear it from my cousin's room. So I went downstairs, turned off the TV, went back up. But as I was heading into my cousin's room, I heard him laughing and giggling. So I assumed my sister was already done with her business, went back to my cousin's room perhaps. But when I went inside, there was no one else in the room but my cousin, giggling and facing the corner of the room. So I asked him, Hey buddy, why are you laughing? My cousin answered, We were playing. And I said, we? He didn't answer. He just continued to giggle. So I carried him out of the room, went back downstairs with my little sister, waited for my aunt to get back. Strange Creature Keeps Visiting Apartment For the past two years, there's been a tapping sound coming from my bedroom window. It started one Halloween night. I know this sounds like a bad movie. And a few times a month, sometimes more often, something taps at my window. There's nothing around to hit the window, and it sounds exactly like a finger tapping the glass. 
Me and my siblings are used to it. A few days ago, my brother started complaining that something was communicating to him from outside the dance window. Keep in mind, we live in an apartment complex, so we always have the blinds closed. He says that whatever it was just kept saying hello to him in a robotic, high-pitched voice. The rest of our family just shrugged it off. The day after, we go outside and there's small tracks leading up to all of our windows. I don't know what animal could have made those tracks, because I think it's bipedal. Later that day, I was in my bedroom laying in my mind. It's next to my window. Blinds closed. I jump out of my skin. Someone's loudly banging against the glass. I ignore it. I just assume it's one of my siblings sneaking up on me. I then find out that they were both together at that moment. In the house while it happened. They hadn't been out for hours. The next night, my brother complained about the voice outside his window again. We told him to ignore it. If it's something supernatural, we don't want to mess with it. Yesterday, while we're all preparing for dinner, my entire family and I heard the creature screaming outside. I was too shocked to move and grab my phone and record it. It kept yelling, Hello, come out! Exactly how my brother described. It was so loud we could hear it clearly from the loud kitchen and dining room. We didn't want to look outside. This morning more snow had fallen, but fresh prints were there. I was able to take pictures before they melted. I don't know what to make of any of this, but it's impossible for this to be a prank because of the lack of human prints in the snow. I'm going to keep my phone on me tonight so that I can record the creatures talking if it comes by again. Pretty sure they will. The clinic where I work is haunted. So I'm a fresh nurse. Just finished school and hospital experience, waiting to graduate. However, where I live, we're in a high demand of nurses. So you're allowed to work once you've passed school. Anyway, so I've been working at this clinic for a couple of months now. It's a private clinic, so the interior basically looks like a house. It has a pharmacy, the doctor's office, and two other offices down the hall, a waiting room and a back room. So this starts about two weeks ago. I was called into work a full day, meaning 7 a.m. to 8 p.m., because my other co-workers were tested positive for COVID. So I came in as usual, brought my coffee, sat down waiting for people to walk in. We didn't have any appointments that day, so I was just chilling. Then I heard scuffling in the back. First I thought it was the ceiling fan, since it creaks from time to time. But the more I ignored it, the louder the sound got. I got annoyed, walked to the back thinking maybe the dog got in. The doctor's house is attached to the clinic. But as I walked to the back, I got a feeling of dread. As if I continued walking, something bad would happen. I stopped halfway down the hallway. I decided to let whatever was back there stay there. Though I didn't think it was paranormal or anything, really. It was just the last thing to cross my mind, actually. But then... It was around 6 p.m. on the same day. I was attending to a client, bringing up her medicine and the box of aspirin at the top shelf just fell. It startled both of us, but again, didn't think anything of it. Placed it back on the shelf, the client left, and I sat back down waiting for closing time. When closing time came, 
I remember I had left my purse and sweater in one of those offices. I wasn't thinking much, so I went back to gather my stuff. As I gathered everything, I heard the door open and the chime went off. So I stepped out and called from the hallway. Sorry, we're closed. There was no response. I walked out to check, but there was no one there, not a soul. I locked up, left for the night. The next day I came in and we were pretty busy with clients. So the events of yesterday didn't cross my mind. At 5 p.m. the doctor called it a day and left to go home. So I was all alone once again. I was on my phone scrolling on Instagram. That's when the lights turned off. I thought, great, power outage. But as I looked up, I saw the lights in the waiting room were still on. I looked next to me, where the switch was, and it was off. That's when I got a little freaked out, but I switched it back in and continued scrolling on my phone. Got up to use the bathroom, left my phone on the counter. When I came back, it wasn't there. I thought, maybe I did take it with me. So, I went back to the back of the bathroom. It wasn't there either. I looked in the hallway where I had walked to see maybe if it had fallen. Nope, there was nothing there. I remember thinking, I'm really going nuts here. When it came back to the front, my phone was on the shelf next to the bottle of aspirin. Loss of words, but stuff like that kept happening every day until recently. My coworkers just got retested again. One of them still has COVID, but the other doesn't. So that means she comes in and I get a few days off. On the day before I left for my day off, about two days ago, I was once again sitting at the front counter reading a book this time. This is when I heard footsteps. Wet footsteps coming from the back room. I thought enough was enough. Really thought someone was messing with me now. I switched on a light to the back, peered into the room. No one was in there. Shook my head, turned to walk down the hallway, but I stopped. Down the hall were visible wet footprints. It was as if somebody was following me. Closed up early, took my crap, went home. I got back in tomorrow. I'm convinced that there's something haunting my workplace. These are just some of my experiences that I've had. Many more, though, from when I was at the hospital. Sleeping Shadow Person A number of years ago, I awoke after an afternoon nap to an unexplained shadow near the edge of my bed. It seemed strange, but I didn't think it was something paranormal, initially. I sat up slightly, began to look around the room for what could be maybe casting the shadow, thinking I'd find a jacket hanging in front of a light source. Found nothing. I sat and looked at it a bit longer. I then had the realization that there's no way a shadow could be suspended in the air like that. It wasn't cast against a wall or an object. It was just sticking into the air, coming up from my bed. At this point, I was completely bewildered. It was a formless mass with no discernible features. Couldn't figure it out. I decided I'd have a smoke while I continued to look for an explanation. As soon as I shifted to reach for my cigarette, the shadow moved. As soon as it moved, I could make out its rough shape. The initial movement was its head raising from a slumped position. Its head then turned and looked at me. As soon as it saw me, wide-eyed staring at it 
It jumped to its feet, ran straight away through my bedroom wall. This shadow person had sat on the edge of my bed and seemingly fallen to sleep. It's the most surreal thing I've ever experienced. The entire thing played out in about 60 seconds. Never had anything like this happen to me before or since. I was going through some stuff at the time. My doctor said it was likely some form of hallucination. But I'm not really sure. Has anybody else had something like this happen? I've read many stories about ghosts and shadow people, but never heard anything similar to my experience of a sleeping shadow. Ceiling Girl Haunting Every house I've ever lived in has had some strange characteristics that came with them. When I was a child, the house I lived in had a little bear that came with it. The rental house I lived in before moving into my current house frequently felt freezing in the washing room, even when the washing machine and dryer had been on all day. Waking up to rattling in the bathroom happened a lot. My current house had been the only one without any weird or suspicious paranormal happening. Until around last year, when I got back from a camping trip. My brother was staying with me at the time. I had just ended a serious relationship. I needed the support. My brother slept in the lounge. I slept in my room. But that night was probably the scariest night I've ever had. I woke up after a pretty weird dream about being chased by a rabid animal. Probably not as bad as I remember it, though. When I turned to face the ceiling, there was a woman clinging onto my ceiling like in a classic horror movie. She kind of looked like the girl that climbs out of TVs. Sticking to the ceiling was a pile of bones in the shape of an eight. And there were scratch marks everywhere. I just stared at that for a while before my pet started drinking water really loudly and the girl on the ceiling, she snapped her neck to look at me. My first instinct was just to lay on my side, force myself to sleep, at least through whatever was happening. My brother told me the next morning that he slept great, had no idea what I was talking about. Since then, the exact same thing has happened at least once a month. I'm really looking for what she is, or what she's doing. Death does not exist. When we die, what happens? Do we cease to exist? The answer is no, for one reason. Where were you before you became? Think back to when you were a child and try to remember. Wasn't there a day that it all began? A day that you woke up and thought, Where am I? No matter who you are, don't you remember being a baby? You don't remember until a certain age, and I believe that's because that is when you finally gain consciousness. You see, you've lived before, and thus you will live again. When you die, I believe seeing is how time is made of mankind and does not exist. When you pass on, your soul energy moves from your body travels to another reality where you enter the body at the same age that you finally gain consciousness as a child. We have deja vu because subconsciously we retain memories like an imprint on our soul so that in our next life we can do things different without realizing that we are. Have you ever even once thought to wait and have a feeling like I shouldn't do this or go there? 
That is your subconscious memories from your past life because you already did that. So the point I'm making is death is irrelevant and does not exist due to death being man-made as well in the physiological aspect. We cannot measure death by body because we are the soul, the energy, and our body is just a vessel. Living with Ghost Dogs I work with kids, so I'm pretty substance-free and of sound mind. The man who killed his two dogs and himself in my house are still here. The dogs, too. A German Shepherd and a Malamute. So, backstory. I got the house cheap because of its history of a very gory previous owner's suicide. He'd also attempted to murder somebody during his mental breakdown, but I don't know the details. He was a nice person, had no mental health support, decided to kill his beloved dogs and himself. I thought how horrible, but man, I need a place to live as soon as possible. So I braced myself against superstition or the creeps. The weirdness started immediately. Pounding and moaning like the house is being hit by a bulldozer. Neighbors can hear it from outside sometimes. Huge dogs howling from somewhere inside the house. Bedroom doors opening and closing. Footsteps through the kitchen hallway every night at 4 a.m. It is nerve-wracking, but also sad. More than once I've awoken thinking my house is being broken into. Sometimes I feel somebody sitting on my bed, and more than once I've had my quilt put on top of me. This quilt is in my closet, so it had to be carried out and placed on me. Then I started seeing the dogs. Walking across my bedroom carpet and standing at the foot of my bed, staring at me. Startling the heck out of me, because I don't have a GSD or Malamute. I have a Sheltie with an overbite, and can only make fff noises. My own dog, Kelly Barkson, went crazy fff at the ghost. I ran over the house making sure it was really spirits. Kelly now sleeps under the covers with me. We see their fluffy tails and watch them disappear into the closet. I don't think he's a bad spirit, and the dogs are certainly innocent. Often things go missing. I ask him and the dogs to help. The missing things reappear in totally odd locations, like my lipstick showing up in the freezer or my headphones under my dresser. My first experience happened two months ago. My fiance and I were hanging out together because she was off that day. She works from a turkey packaging plant. She's gone from 2 p.m. to anywhere between 10 p.m. and 1 a.m. We heard a lot of rustling and movement in the bushes, trees next to our small house. So I went into my porch with a flashlight to see what was up. I'm still hearing the sounds, but not seeing anything, so I just brush it off and go back inside. Well, the next day she tells me that... Hold on, guys that are listening. I feel like I read this story yesterday. But with a different title. So my guess is this Reddit user posted this in multiple places with different titles. Let's not explain this. Let's just continue in case you didn't hear it last time, and I'll simply read it again. Let's go. 
the next day she tells me that her grandpa heard stuff too, saw two glowing red eyes in the trees. He tells her whatever it was was taller than him and he's six foot. I hear scraping on my metal roof, which I suppose could be tree branches. But the times I hear it, there's no wind. A few times I've heard light tapping on the side of my house. Sometimes I think I hear voices outside, but I'm always watching stuff on my phone, playing a video game, so I always try to brush it off as me just hearing things. My grandfather has a dog who roams around the property at night, at least when he forgets to bring him in or when he falls asleep. Fluffy's been barking randomly at night, sometimes for a few minutes to a few hours. A few nights ago, I let my dogs out to use the bathroom. I have two leads for them because I can't trust them not to run off. I noticed while I'm getting my St. Bernard off the lead that my husky's staring up at the driveway at something I can't see. A few seconds later, she just starts cowering like she's scared ends up peeing where she is, so I yell at her to get inside, which she does, and I start taking her lead off when I noticed Fluffy race up the driveway and start barking, so I book it inside. My husky immediately runs into her kennel, wouldn't come out the rest of the night, not even for a treat. The day after the incident with my husky, I again let the dogs out. As I'm letting my dogs back in, I notice two red glowing dots through my neighbor's fence that's about 30 feet away from the position and I can tell that they're like four to five feet off the ground. I try not to freak out and do my best to calmly get my dogs back inside where I almost have a panic attack. This was at 7.30 p.m. My fiance got home at about 11 p.m where I gained the courage to go back out with my dogs where the lights were still there. When I went to investigate the next day, they were gone. No lights. Yesterday I let both my dogs out again. I was out there for a few minutes. My fiancé comes rushing out and asks me if I'm okay. Apparently she heard a loud noise like I fell and like my St. Bernard yelped like he was injured. I got freaked out, told her to stay outside with me, where she tells me how quiet it is outside, how she's getting a bad feeling. That's everything I can remember at the moment. I don't know what's happening, and I honestly feel as if I'm going crazy. If anybody has any answers or similar experiences, please leave a comment. I'll answer any questions as best I can. So I already suffer from anxiety, depression, and have been under an unreal amount of stress lately. But that being said, until I can get my mental health and stress somewhat better dealt with, I'll be pulling myself back from anything creepy or frightening, as I feel it might be making me more paranoid. I want to thank those of you that have read my story and commented and not thought I was crazy or making it up. It has helped just talking about it. Feel free to still leave a comment or a message. I will read and reply when I feel healthier. Thank you all so much for understanding. Now that I've gotten control over my mental health, I can finally update everybody on my permanent account because more has happened since I unplugged. One day my fiancé and I had to go to Fort Smith early in the morning, so I had to wake up at 6 a.m. to let my dogs outside. This was before the sun came out, so it was still almost pitch black outside. Well, as I'm trying to get them back inside, I see the two glowing red dots in the bushes and trees a few feet next to my neighbor's fence. I honestly just completely froze up at this point. I end up just staring for a couple of minutes when whatever it was blinks. So I finally get a hold of myself, book it inside where I have a mini panic attack. 
My sister-in-law at one point decided to visit us and had gotten to get up early to drive somewhere. She told me when she got in her car, she could hear heavy breathing from the bushes next to her. She couldn't see anything because it was barely light outside. Even though it's warming up here and the insects and frogs are finally making noise again, there has been a lot of nights where it'll be dead silent outside and you just get an eerie feeling like something is watching. I honestly don't know if this could be paranormal, but one night while we were keeping my nephew, we both heard what sounded like a barred owl, but somehow just a little distorted. It was odd. The next night I heard it again, but it was louder, like it was above my house in the trees. I'm not as frightened as I was when I first posted this, but whenever I hear strange noises, I still become a little unnerved. Saw something undeniable in the woods. I'll preface this by saying I've never seen a ghost. I believe in them in my youth, and I've been rather agnostic about my beliefs for a very long time. Simply believing that anything could exist. The older I got, however, the more skeptical I got. This happened last night, and I can now firmly say I am a believer. My friends and I were in a local park last night. We were walking along a trail, and right away something was off. One of my friends has always seen the paranormal. He was extremely uncomfortable. He was seeing figures, hearing footsteps throughout the extent of the walk. My other friend and I couldn't hear or see anything out of the ordinary, so we kind of laughed it off and said he was just scared, which I now regret. It wasn't until we sat down at a tree that things took a turn for the worse. Both of my friends reported feeling of cold dread washing over them that I didn't feel and assumed was anxiety. And then my ghost-seeing friend stared at the tree line, I asked him if he was seeing one. He said yes. I looked into the woods and I saw it. It was a small, wispy figure. It had a white-gray coloration. It seemed to be made out of smoke or mist. It was in constant fluid motion, inverted into itself as if it was barely staying visible. It would bend from just a smoke ball to a small humanoid figure. Not childlike, just small, and it would wave. I pointed at it, asked my friend if it was between these two trees. He said yes. I described what I was seeing. He said, oh God. You see it too. We ran out of there after that. I felt the same dread my other two friends felt. I couldn't shake the feeling for the rest of the night. It's all I can think about now. What was that? It didn't feel like a dead person. It didn't feel like a person at all. It also didn't feel mocking but it felt like it was trying to act in a way that was abnormal for it. I don't know. I'm coming to you all as an ex-skeptic begging for answers. My friend and I both saw the same thing, and all three of us felt the same thing. Mexico City Haunting It was the day before Christmas in 2009 
We were all on the road, leaving my dad's quiet ranch. In, I don't know how to pronounce this. Tequesquity. Teques... Tequesquity, Mexico. I'm probably saying that wrong. Well, they were headed to Mexico City. We've been on vacation in Mexico for about a week already. Planned on staying for another week or so. Me, a 14-year-old female, my mom, my dad, my sister Beth, and my cousin Jazz were all headed to my aunt's house to visit for three days. And we were going to drop off some things that we brought them from the U.S. Our first day there went great. We had fun talking, eating, and playing games. I had always been an animal lover, so when I saw that they had a little chihuahua, I instantly wanted to play with him. But when I got close, it would run to the top of the stairs and just stand there looking at me. So I figured it was a weirdo, left it alone. When night came, we all went to bed. Our aunt put the dog out on the roof patio like she apparently did every night. And my mom, dad, and me went upstairs to the guest room. Beth and Jazz were downstairs on the living room couch. This part of the story is told from my sister's perspective, as I wasn't there. Because she couldn't sleep, my sister stayed up playing her Nintendo DS. Around late, like three o'clock, there was a scraping sound coming from across the room at the dining table. She looked over and watched for a while when something happened that made her want to shit her pants. One of the dining chairs pulled away from the table so far it was about three feet away. She then heard the sound of someone going through the pots and pans in the kitchen. And because the kitchen was around the corner, she couldn't see what was going on. The next morning she told us what happened. And of course, my parents blew it off like all parents do. But Jazz and I believe her. Me and my sister had been through enough for me to know that she was being serious. So that night, my sister and Jazz squeezed themselves into the small guest room with us. I was on the small couch in my room. My parents were on the bed, laying on the floor, smashed like a couple of sardines was Beth and Jazz. That night at three in the morning, of course, I had to pee. Scared from the story that my sister told, I didn't want to go alone. I begged them to come with me. So the three of us, Beth, Jazz, and me, walked down the dark hall to the bathroom. We took turns using the toilet, while the other two looked at the door, praying not to see someone walk by or something. When we were done, we opened the door to go back to the room that we saw him. That weird little dog was standing in the hallway watching us. I don't know how long we stood there, but eventually it walked away going around the corner to the stairs, never breaking eye contact with us. The second we couldn't see it anymore, we ran. Beth and Jazz threw themselves under the blankets while I hurried to close the door but not before making act, but not before making eye contact with the small dog standing at the top of the stairs. The next day, Beth and Jazz were practic well, practically crying, begging my dad to just take us back to the ranch. But he was never the type to believe in ghosts or aliens or anything supernatural, really. So, of course, he laughed and said no. In fact decided to stay a few days more. And when we asked her aunt about the dog, she assured us that she had locked it out on the roof patio like usual. For days we would hear things outside our room. The sound of little kids running down the hall. Things that sounded like bowling balls getting pushed down the stairs. And if I dared to peek outside the room, that dog at the top of the stairs watching us. Finally, the day came when we had one more night just
just one more night to endure before we would finally leave. But of course, it turned out to be the most traumatic. In the middle of the night, while the three of us sat up listening to the sounds of kids running and bowling balls getting pushed downstairs, it suddenly stopped. We watched as something big stood right outside our bedroom door, and slowly, so, so slowly, the doorknob started to turn. Beth and Jazz hugged each other, shutting their eyes tight through tears starting to pray. I was frozen, unable to look away at whatever was on the other side that was about to come in. Finally, the doorknob was turned all the way. Beth and Jazz were practically screaming their prayer as they sobbed. Felt like, felt like I was about to throw up when suddenly my mom sat up and yelled, Would you all just shut up? She then laid back, went to sleep. All was quiet. Even the doorknob had snapped back into place. Whatever was on the other side of the door was gone. The three of us looked at each other saying nothing. And for the rest of the night, nothing happened. The next morning, we all but flew down the stairs, put our bags in the car. My parents said their goodbyes and got ready to hit the road. I sat in the car waiting to leave wasn't about to go back in there. Looking at the house, I could see the dog standing up there on the patio looking down at the car I was sitting in. Never wanted to kick a dog so bad in my whole life. A few minutes later, Beth and Jazz came running out with some news. After telling her aunt about the nights that, well, she had just laughed and said, Oh, I forgot to tell you. Your late grandfather died on that couch you slept on your first night here. He's not really friendly to people sitting on his couch. But we see and hear him around the house almost every night. Nothing to be scared of. I didn't even know how to process that information. How do you just forget to tell your guests about the ghost in your house that's possessive of a specific couch in your home? Not to mention, according to my dad, he later found out that that house was built on top of several graves. But he still thinks it's just a coincidence. It's been 13 years so far. And this is still the worst paranormal experience I've ever had. But sadly, it wasn't for my sister. True story of how my daughter knew death was coming. This story happened a few years ago. I lived in a building with my daughter who grew attached to my neighbor's husband, Teddy, as if he were her dad. One day while talking with my neighbor's wife, my daughter, who's two and a half years old at this time, came running to the door. But Rather than running into my neighbor's apartment to go cuddle up Teddy, she froze at the doorway. She told his wife and I that I needed to be quiet as Teddy was sleeping. Teddy was not sleeping. He was, in fact, sitting on the couch, watching TV. Teddy stood up and called for my daughter to come see him. Again, my daughter looked at his wife and I and told us that Teddy was sleeping that we needed to be quiet. I could see she was getting upset at the fact that we were laughing while telling her that Teddy's awake and wants you to go sit with him. Teddy started approaching the doorway, where we were standing. My daughter began to cry, ran to our apartment screaming, No, Teddy's sleeping. I could feel the goosebumps running across my body. That same day, my daughter went to a relative's place for a sleepover. I had invited my neighbors to come over for a bit. Teddy came over and explained how he wasn't feeling the best. Now he was breathing in and out of a paper bag before coming to my apartment. 
I insisted he go to the hospital to make sure he was all right. On the way Teddy fell ill, asked to pull over so he could be sick on the side of the road. As he was kneeling beside the car, Teddy suffered a major heart attack, passed away while on the way to the hospital. When the service was held for Teddy, it's such a strong feeling that I had to bring my daughter with me. She brought her favorite blanket with her, of course. When my daughter and I got to the funeral home for the viewing, we were greeted by everyone in Teddy's family. They all knew who my daughter was, as Teddy used to talk about her all the time. I held my daughter close as we walked up to the casket where Teddy laid. My daughter leaned down almost as if she was going to whisper to him. She then told me that Teddy was sleeping and that he was really cold. She took her blanket, tucked Teddy in, then looked at him and said, Oh, he was happy and warm now. That night as I sat alone in the living room, my phone began to ring. Four or five rings later, still no name appeared. I quickly answered the phone in the middle of the ring only to hear the dial tone. The call didn't even show up as an incoming call afterwards. It felt like Teddy called to say goodbye to us. It was so strange that my daughter knew there was something wrong with Teddy before anything even happened. A few months later, we went to go visit my grandmother who was passing away from pancreas cancer. My daughter refused to enter my grandmother's room. She kept saying how grandmother was sleeping, that everybody should go leave her to let her go to sleep. I instantly began to cry. Only four days later, I got the call that my grandmother had passed away in her sleep. Creepy things I've experienced. One, when I was a child around eight, it was a summer's day. I was playing in my scooter near a road. I walked past a house and the door was slightly cracked. I saw what appeared to be a really weird red devil-like face looking at me through the bottom of the door. It didn't look human but it didn't look exactly, well, it didn't look exactly creepy. Maybe it was another child. Maybe I imagined that. I don't know. Two. I was around 14 years old. I was in my bed relaxing, trying to go to sleep around one. I saw this thing peek around my door. It had just a blackness for a face. Looked like it was wearing a hood exactly like a monk. It had long pointy fingers that bent around the door. From like it was grabbing on it. Ran into my mom's room shitting myself. Woke her up. The next day she asked my auntie, who's a medium, to find out what happened. Apparently the thing I saw was a monk called Samuel. And she said that he was a good spirit and he was a protector. My entire estate was built around an old masonry for monks. I believe they meant monastery, the east coast of England. Three. The last one I was 19 in my house, middle of England, different to the above house. I lived with my friend, and we were getting ready to go out into town. I was in the bathroom having a pee, and I shouted her name. She called me from her bedroom, told me to come up. I was walking up the stairs to her room, and it was quite dark, only the lights from the street lights outside. I saw my friend in her room wearing what looked like a black dress. She kind of skipped and jumped out, then went behind the door, I went into her room, turned the light on, asked her why she changed clothes. 
When I went to go look behind the door, no one was there. I shouted her again, freaked out. She answered from the bathroom where she was. Four. This is one I've just remembered now. I didn't add onto the previous post, so this occurred in the same house as the story above. So this house had, an, well, an incredibly eerie vibe to it, especially on the middle and top floor. As he went up the stairs, it kind of felt you were cut off from the world. It was just very uneasy. I was laid in bed with my dog once. She started going weird looking around the ears, pointing back, scratching on the wall. Then the curtains just blew, a strong gust of wind blew them, but the window was shut. There were other things like random creaking, hearing pennies dropping on the floor of the room above me, which was wood, cupboards banging when me and the dog went up to go to the bed. The Man in the Suit My mother and uncles, when they were all kids, around 9 to 15, I think, played with the Ouija board. Now back then, when they were kids, that sort of thing was advertised as a fun game. Kids would get one for Christmas or their birthdays. They would go down to my grandparents' basement, I live in the same house now, and play it, thinking of it as some stupid game. One time when they were playing with it, a spirit or demon whose name was Annie and aged seven started cussing my mother out like calling her a bitch or telling her to fuck off. But one thing is, they didn't take it seriously. Therefore, they didn't say goodbye or play it properly. My uncles were playing it by themselves one time. Came running upstairs, refused to tell anyone what happened or what the board said. They ran outside, threw it in a dumpster behind Burger King, thinking that that was going to be the last of it all. I think that made the spirits connected to the board mad. And then the next day when my uncle was going to school, he looked behind the Burger King and the entire dumpster was burned and turned into ash. Back in 2014, my parents were downstairs at my grandparents' house. My dad walked outside and sat down. My mom came down a few minutes after him. When turning the corner after walking down the stairs, she saw some man sitting in a chair in the middle of the basement. He wore a black suit and had no face. She blinked and he was gone. After going outside with my dad, before she had the chance to say anything about the man, my dad told her he saw a man sitting there when he looked back, thinking it was her, looking at him. They both saw the exact same ghost or entity that night. Fast forward to now. I live in my grandparents' house now. The same one they played the board at years back. And the basement is surely haunted by something. When leaving my room a few months ago, I looked behind me and saw a little figure of a girl standing behind my bed. She didn't say anything. Then again, I ran before she could. I sometimes hear things or see shadow figures in that basement. Try to ignore them. Still think this is all happening because of what my uncle and mother did over 40 years ago. Creepy experiences that solidified my belief in the paranormal. I live on a reservation. I'm Lakota, Native American. There's quite a bit of superstition amongst our culture, which is normal. 
There's all kinds of stories told to us from generation to generation. So you can imagine the spookiness. Maybe you can't. I don't know. But essentially, we have good, tricky, and sort of negative spirits. We will us are said to be little people who just mess with you, I guess. Little shadows you might be seeing darted around the room super fast. And other spirits who've been known to show their victims their melting face in dire times, usually. They seem to all serve a purpose. So I'm not going to lie and say I'm a skeptic because there's too much weird shit in this world that is just obvious. Oh, anyways, I didn't really get the vibe that one spirit visited the house. It felt like several coming and going over years. Never really felt evil or anything. But I guess over the time, it was a bit of a nuisance. Chairs would move on their own. Stuff would fall in the night. The usual shit that I tend to justify with common explainable things. But one experience was not explainable at all. It was when I was 14 or 15. My room in the basement, technically, but it was more of a split-level type house with the kitchen, living room, a couple of bedrooms upstairs. My room along with like five more rooms downstairs. It's the common cookie-cutter house you see on any res. But it was fairly large. I remember I was burning sage and sweet grass earlier that evening. That's a big thing in our culture, to cleanse and keep good energy. Some people say that sweet grass can bring about positive and negative spirits, but I really can't attest to how true that is. So I was dozing off with my little lamp on, but it was dead quiet. TV wasn't on for some reason. All of a sudden, I woke up alert as fuck. As soon as I came to, I seen my bedroom door start opening very slowly. I was like, what the fuck? Kind of scanned the room. But my focus was immediately shifted back to the door. It felt like somebody was coming into my room. I fucking froze. Felt the spirit walk right up to the side of my bed. I was definitely spooked, but as I gained my courage, I looked around my room again, trying to rationalize this shit. But my window was closed, and in the middle of the night, our doors are all locked. There was no draft. I mean, there was no explanation. It's like a sixth sense, the same way animals react. Anyways, I feel like this is getting too long. So I just add that I feel like one of the spirits would mimic my family. Maybe more than one, I don't know. But one night, I was older and pregnant. I woke up to what sounded like a demonic vision of my mom. She was yelling my name. Shit definitely scarred me. So eventually moved out of my mama's house. Many years go by with no activity. Cut to January 2022. My hubby and kids are sleeping. I knew this because my kids are on the couches next to me. My husband said he's going to lay down because he wasn't feeling well. I'm working on drawing and open to YouTube. I forget to start a video. And if I recall correctly, the first like 10 seconds of the video plays when you're just browsing. So that had happened. And now it was just on the main page on my TV. I sat there for maybe 20 minutes in utter silence. Despite our heater, and out of the fucking complete silence, I hear Brook, my name, clear as day. So I scream bloody murder and immediately yell back, what? I was genuinely scared and seriously pissed thinking my husband was trying to scare me. But the thing was, is that voice came from very close to me in the kitchen, not even 10 feet away, 
and the voice sounded exactly like my own, as if I was trying to sound masculine, like it was deliberately trying to scare me. I stood and yelled again for my husband. No answer. I looked at my kids to see if they were up or talking in their sleep, as they often do that, but nope. I got up and walked to the back of her house to where my husband was on the bed, sound asleep. What the fuck? I woke him up and asked him if he was just messing with me, but he was genuinely sick, said he was passed out the whole time. Man, that shit shook me up. But oh well, I guess. I mean, what else can you say? The most we'll ever know about other realms will come when we pass on. Until I think there's no explanation. I'm not looking for answers or anything. And if you don't believe, I understand. My beloved dog came to visit after I took in a foster dog. I've had many dogs, all of which were wonderful. But I think for most people, there's one dog that was the special one. For me, that was my dachshund hunter. He was amazing, sweet, smart, loved everyone, and just a joy to have in my life. He died at a somewhat young age for a doxy, ten years of congestive heart failure. Needless to say, I was devastated, especially as they had told me when he had first got diagnosed that he had up to two years to live if I took good care of him and took his medications. Even though I was diligent with his care, and he didn't even look sick at this point, he passed away after only three months. In an attempt to cope with my grief, I signed up to be a foster for a local rescue group. I was by no means ready to adopt another dog, but I thought perhaps it would help me heal to help rescue a dog while at the same time, maybe I could help get a dog ready for its forever home and adoption. The first couple of weeks or so with my foster were uneventful and my foster dog turned out to be very sweet and well-behaved little guy. At first I crated him, then let him sleep on my bed next to my bed, or rather on a bed next to my bed, and then eventually he was sleeping on the bed with me like Hunter had in the past. One night in the middle of the night, when I was dead asleep with my foster dog in the bed with me, I felt a dog jump off my bed to the right lower corner. I assumed it was my foster, but right after it happened I felt my foster who was laying against my left side lunge towards the spot where the jumping had occurred, implying that he felt it too. I grabbed my foster dog in mid-lunge, held on tightly with my eyes closed in fear, now realizing that it wasn't him who jumped off the bed. The next morning after finally falling asleep again, hugging my foster all night and in daylight, I searched the entire room and the closet for anything that might have caused what we both felt that night before. There was nothing on the floor, nothing anywhere near the bed, nothing at all in the room that could explain it. I sleep with the door to my bedroom closed and locked and live alone. And while I do have a sliding glass door in the bedroom leading to a small outdoor patio, I rarely go out there, and the sliding glass door was locked with a deadbolt on top. I ended up searching the entire condo. I found absolutely nothing. My foster dog also never reacted to anything. And if you know Dachshunds, they're hunting dogs with great noses. They'll find anything hiding in your house. My initial reaction was that the foster dog jumped off the bed, came from, you know, maybe Hunter was alive there, or a few times he jumped off the bed in the exact middle of the night from the exact location. 
I remember the times because dachshunds are not supposed to jump because of their back issues and would always scold him for doing so. Plus, it would sort of wake me up like it did this time. To be honest, it was too heavy of a jump to be anything smaller than a dog, as it was the exact force of when a hunter would do it, and from the same spot on the bed. I might have been, well, willing to chalk it up to a very vivid dream, if not for my foster dog's reaction. He literally lunged at the spot right after it happened, so we felt it enough to wake him up and have him react to it. I truly believe Hunter came back to visit me, but I'm not 100% sure why. Maybe to see my new foster dog and what he'd look like, or to tell me that he wasn't happy that I had another dog in his bed. My foster went on to get adopted by a wonderful couple who I handpicked, and I didn't adopt another dog for another two years. I never had another incident like this again, but I did see a pet medium at a street fair one time. I thought, what the heck, it's only $20. Well, he told me that Hunter had been trying to get back to me since he left, and that he watches over me. Hashtag grain of salt, but who knows? I still remember Hunter and think of him almost daily. It's attached to her. This story that happened about five or six years ago with the girl O was dating. I've always been sensitive to the paranormal as a kid. I used to see shadow figures in my childhood home, and from a kid till about 19, I had experiences around that house, and my aunt's house who lived right behind us, and the land was connected. So yeah, they traveled frequently. Sorry I'm rambling, but if you want to hear about those stories after this one, let me know. But anyway, here we go. So I went to high school with this girl and always had a bit of a crush on her. But our paths never really crossed like that. But fast forward to 2014. We linked up and it was magical at first. We spent so much time together it was insane. We talked about everything, including the paranormal. I shared stories. She shared some, including her telling me that she was being haunted by an entity. Like, I firmly believe in and have had so many experiences with the paranormal that I didn't think it was, well, that serious, but boy, was I wrong. It started off subtle. Me and her would spend time together, we would lose time, which is a no-no when it comes to the paranormal. Once we took a nap holding each other and when we woke up, we were sore. Like, I mean, running like three marathons sore. Later that same week, she was about to leave my house like normal. Well, I had opened the door for her. We were saying a final goodbye. And, like, something slammed into the door. Keep in mind, no one was home but us. We were in the middle of the room making out, as you do when no one's outside in a lived apartment complex, top apartment. Our neighbors had moved out three weeks prior. Someone lived next to us and it was in the middle of a school day. So all the kids around there were in school. Besides, there's nothing thrown at the door. And if someone did, I guess it ran or else we would have seen them. Before I go any further, one thing I forgot to mention is she could see it that she wasn't able to see it. Excuse me? She could see it. She was always able to see it. Okay. She could see it, and she was always able to see it. I only was able to feel its presence in the beginning, anyway. So, continuing to the next incident, it happened at her house. We were getting a bit frisky. Her idea, I swear, but 
Anyways, we were doing our thing and I felt uneasy like someone was watching us. She stayed in the middle of nowhere and it was like 2 a.m. Well, as we were holding each other, I asked her, was it here? She says, yes, points to the corner of the room. And she said it appeared as soon as we came into the room. My skin was crawling after she said that. Later that night or morning, when I was about to leave, we were sitting in my car. We were just talking. She fell asleep while I was holding her. She was only asleep for maybe three minutes or so before she snapped awake and said it's angry. And I swear to God, Courtney, this huge shadow figure came walking by my driver's side window. I'm six foot three. This thing would have towered over me. And do you know how when you're sitting in a turning lane waiting for the light to change, and you sort of, you know, turn like a semi drives by you and your car shakes from the G-force? Well, as the entity went by my car, it felt just like that. The next instant, we were about to go out by our bar with our best friend and her boyfriend too. I had just gotten off work. I had to come home and shower and, well, change before we go. Well, they picked me up at work, which was in a different town and county than where I live. And But when we pulled into my apartment complex, there was a shadow figure and it was waiting as we turned in. And before somebody says, maybe you were just seeing things, the driver, which was the boyfriend of my girlfriend's best friend, said, There goes the ghost. We were all very shook because we were just in a whole other county. And here it is, just waiting for her in my house. <sighs> the last instant, this was the last paranormal thing to happen before we broke up. Her ex upset her really bad one night. Backstory, they have kids together. So them talking was very normal. Continuing on it like storming really bad, I was pleading with her to just come over and stay the night at my house. She had finally complied, and she came over, and it was like 12 a.m. at this point. We ate some junk food, watched a movie, fell asleep. I wasn't awake for this. She told me that at some point she had said she heard like tapping on my bedroom door and a voice which sounded like her mom telling her to come out of the room. Now her mom, one, didn't know where I lived, two, she was in Ohio visiting a sick relative, and now, oh, by the way, we were in Florida, so assuming that my girlfriend told her mom where I lived and also lied about her being out of state, and also gave her a key to my house somehow, or just made this whole thing up, which I also don't know why she would. We weren't even talking about that entity that night. Thanks for checking this out. See you next time. Step into the shadows with Paranormal M. Get ready to hear some first accounts experiences with the paranormal. We update videos daily and appreciate your attendance. Subscribe, drop an M in the comment box or your own thoughts, and join us on a thrilling expedition through our latest enigmatic stories. We hope you're ready for an immersive experience. I think my instincts saved my life. This was last night. I'm currently here in Arizona. The full or almost full moon was up. Now, if you live like in a city or somewhere near a forest, you probably don't know how bright it can actually get on a full moon. For some reason, I've gotten really into mapping. Me and my little cousin made one big, crudely constructed map of the desert surrounding our campground. We wanted to explore more in the night. So, when darkness set upon the desert, 
we ventured out into the dark. My grandpa made this super cool wooden sword for me. It has spikes all around it. It would hurt really bad if you were hit by it. I guess that if some crazy person or a coyote came after us, I could either scare it off or beat it away. We moved around half a mile from camp. We came to the wash. For anybody who doesn't know, when it rains, yep, it rains in the desert. Water can flow and create rivers. When the water is gone, the empty rivers are still there. These are called washes. Some can be huge, some can be a few feet wide. This one is about a hundred feet wide. We were walking down the wash. Being able to see everything and having a spiked club, we weren't really scared of anything. We went to see the dead, the skeletal body of a falcon, which we dubbed Anakin after the Jedi who was cut to pieces by his master, then returned to the wash, being careful around shadows, in case anything was hiding in them. After about 20 minutes of exploring, we came to a part of the wash where the walls curved in by a few feet. This change was barely noticeable, as the wash was still huge. However, as we were about to enter this small spot, I got this terrifying feeling in my stomach. I wanted to run, to ditch my cousin and get away from there. Instead, I grabbed his arm, told him that we should go back. He turned around and walked back to our camp, the whole time blabbing about a custom Smash character. I followed him and I got that feeling again but around five times stronger. I stopped walking and turned around. Standing where the walls curved in was what looked to be a man. He was huge, at least seven feet tall. It looked naked in the light, but I didn't see any sort of genitals. The legs of the creature were bent backwards under the knees, like wolves and dogs. Said legs were small, and the monster's arms were longer than I was tall. I'm 5'10". I couldn't see its face, but I highly doubt I wanted to. If the thing stood on its back legs, it would maybe be 10, 14 feet tall. The creature didn't attack, though. All it did was crawl. Yeah, crawl. It crawled back up the wash wall and into the bushes. The crawling was perfect. The knees didn't even touch the ground. It wasn't like a baby crawl. It was more of a girl from the ring crawl. The moment it disappeared into the bushes, I ran. I grabbed my cousin's arm and dragged him all the way back to the campsite. I have no doubt in my mind that if I had gone any further, I would be dead right now. I don't think my pathetic wooden club would do any damage to that thing. I told my family that I saw a coyote and that I was freaked out by it. They wouldn't believe me if I told them what I saw. I don't want to leave the trailer now. I don't want to go outside at all. I want to know if anybody else has seen something like this in Arizona. Thing is still out there. I want to know what it is. The Weird Cat There was one night that always seemed to replay through my mind. Even years later, I still can't get over it. Ten years my brother spent the night with me as I began living with my grandparents for very personal reasons. It seemed odd, but I remember we were in the front room and my brother was on MySpace. 
I think I was watching what I remember to be Full Metal Alchemist on the TV. Our grandpa had a habit of turning the thermostat to below room temperature because he would get hot easily. As I was watching my show, I noticed that I could see my breath as I breathed. Condensation. I looked at my brother and expressed how ridiculously cold it had gotten in the room. I decided to get up and change the thermostat until I noticed the most strangest thing as I entered the other room. The other rooms in the house were basically room temperature, but the dining room was practically freezing. My grandparents only had one unit, and that unit would keep all the rooms the same temperature when being used. I walked back into the dining room to tell my brother what was going on, till something ran past my feet and I stumbled. Now. I will state that my grandparents have a cat. His name is Harley. He is dumber than a sack of potatoes, but very lovable. However, this wasn't him. Harley was sleeping on the sofa in the same room that we were in. I looked up into the next room, and on the top of this old sewing machine that my grandmother had was this strange cat-like creature. Description Sitting on the top of the sewing machine was this somewhat large cat. It had ears, but no mouth, no nose, just two black pits for eyes, white organic fleshy material for skin. Weirdly enough, it had a hue of purple on its back, but the main attention was its dark gaping eyes, as if they were lifeless stared at me for about 20 seconds before jumping down, walked toward the wall and just faded out like someone photoshopped at the opacity, just turned it down till it vanished. My mind was stumped and shocked. I turned to my brother, realized that he had a shocked look on his face as well. I remember the exact words that came out of his mouth. This was that night after seeing it. Dude. Did you see that freaky ass cat? This guy jumps up from the computer and yells, You saw that too! I wish we had smartphones back then. I've had three incidences which I could have taken a picture of the weird crap that goes on. But it never crosses my mind because I'm trying to process what the hell is in fact going on. The strangest part of this is that after that faded away, there were voices coming from the kitchen, as if a number of people had appeared and were throwing a party. And let me just say, these voices were loud. However, no one in the house was woken up from it, aunt and grandparents. Neither did the cat, which was freakishly odd. It was 3 a.m. when this all happened, and it lasted till 3.04, 3.06 a.m. I know that from research that 3 a.m. is the witching hour. But it's just a coincidence. Or has anybody else experienced something like this? Me and my brother have seen ghosts since being young teens. Now being in our late 20s. So I was 16, my brother was 14. We had both always had an overactive imagination as very young kids, and had always been scared of being alone at our grandparents, because their crib was always creepy. One day I had to use the bathroom, and my grandparents were outside, they were fixing up our vegetable garden. As it was, I asked Nick, Yo dude. Would you follow me into the house so I can go use the bathroom? Nick judgingly disappointed goes, Fine. As I'm in the hallway bathroom, my brother begins looking at the photos hung on the walls of our family. And I'm quickly tending to my business. The next thing I know, as I'm about to walk out of the bathroom, Nick says, Dude, there's someone in the gaming room. I walk out and peer.
disappear into the same room that he's looking into. And for the first time in my teenage life, I froze with utter confusion. Because obviously, this person was not a person, and clearly wasn't a human being. Description There was a translucent gray ghost that was floating at least eight inches off the floor, staring at a cross that was nailed to the wall in the game room. It had thin white hair, looked like it was thinning out from old age. It was also wearing a long nightgown, which was also a gray, whitish color. The weirdest thing that I'd noticed was the strange, smoky mist coming from it, which seemed to be evaporating into the air. In a floating like style, it turned around and looked at us. This ghost had no face. Its face looked like those depictions of Slender Man. To this day, I still can't believe how fast we ran out of that house, screaming, laughing our asses off. Two days later, I came back over myself and found that the cross had broken off the wall. It was made of marbled clay. Pieces of it were still on the wall, strangely enough. Even to this day, Nick and I can describe what we saw and what happened. Our description of this ghost are both the same. We never believed in this stuff as teenagers, but that day made us into believers. The Haunting of Dobby, Story 2 The Event month had passed after the floating man had appeared. Me and my brother were still bugged. We were needing answers to what had happened. Mostly because no one would believe us, not our parents, nor our friends. So we decided to grab a camera and a candle for the brave mission of finding proof. After two hours of going room to room with no luck, we ended up in the master bedroom of our grandparents' house. Nick laid the candle on the bathroom sink in the bedroom. I went to take pictures in the darkness. Out of nowhere, the camera dies. We were weirded out because the batteries were brand new, as I was the one who opened the pack and slapped those energy-filled babies in. Confused, I changed the batteries with new ones that were in my pocket, which strangely also died. With the loss of our camera, no Energizer Bunny batteries, we decided to give up. I looked at Nick and said, Dude, how can we suck this bad at ghost hunting? We laughed, and we turned on the light and decided to leave. But I noticed Nick had forgotten the candle. I decided to fetch the strangely now extinguished candle, and as I entered the doorframe into the bathroom, I froze. I noticed something was staring at me. Description The master bathroom is made of two rooms, one with a giant mirror and a sink. Then on the left side of this room is a doorway to another room. That has a shower and a toilet. As I look down toward the left doorway, there is a little shadowy figure peeking over the doorframe. It leaned in more to get a better look at me. It was solid black, darker than the darkness in the room. All except for its eyes. They were solid white. I jumped back about six feet from the bathroom. Nick, looking at me, goes, Dude, what's wrong? I looked at him in disbelief and replied, Look in there, and look at the bottom left. He sticks his head into the bathroom, and not even three seconds later he screams, grabbing the door, slamming it. What the fuck? That's all he could say. I pulled the camera out of my pocket and tried to turn it on to get a shot of it, but with no avail. 
They looked at each other and decided to take another look. He opened the door and the little ghost was gone. Weirdly, he didn't see this thing at the time, so in my curiosity, I needed to know what Nick had seen. After asking him, his description was shocking to me. He described that he saw a three-foot-tall little man. This little man was peeking around the corner with white eyes. Freaked out, we decided to leave and process what just happened. As we walked out of the master bedroom, the camera came back on at full battery level and working properly to our disbelief. We later named that ghost Dobby, like the elf from Harry Potter. Night shifts in an old warehouse. So four years ago, I got hired to do night shifts as a security guy. It's in a very old building. Dates back to 1917, but fairly good and renovated, except for some parts. I've worked here for two years. Part of the job is leaving the front desk and walking two big closing rounds, as they call them, to check for any dangers, like open windows, potential fire dangers, electronics that are still on, mostly at the selling desks and the magazine rooms backstage. The first time I got spooked quite heavily was because of the mannequins. When doing my first round, I walked past quite a lot of mannequin, and at the second floor there's a lot of designer clothing. I like them, so I remembered how some of those mannequins were positioned. The second round, I walked some of the mannequins and they were facing the opposite side as they previously were. This was within my first, maybe, month of working here. About three months later, while checking the stock rooms, the radio was still turned on at the third floor. While walking toward it and checking the clothing hanging there, I saw a vague pale face with black long hair staring at me from between some of the clothing hanging there. I full out sprinted toward the door. I was scared shitless. I couldn't be a person since, well, it couldn't be a person since the clothes hanging there were fairly high up, and I didn't see any legs. At this point, I was questioning my decision to work here, called in sick for a few shifts, decided to try again, one more time. Fast forward a few months while checking out the kitchen, I heard whispers coming from the freezer area. Scared as fuck, but I wanted to be 100% sure. So, I took out my phone, started recording a voice memo, got closer to the freezer. After being there for more than maybe five seconds, realizing it got louder, I had actual proof on my phone, I ran downstairs. I waited at the desk to finally be able to leave this place. I kept listening to the voice memo. I never realized something like this would actually happen to me. I'm a very down-to-earth guy, never believed in paranormal stuff. But this shook me to the core. After this last occurrence, I stopped working there. I keep getting visited by my dead wife. When I was about 16, I met my now deceased wife. We were childhood lovers and stuck with each other with relative ease through our teen and adult years. We didn't argue that much. And when we did, it was finished as quickly as it started. We have two kids together, and we're a pretty normal household. My wife was a very spiritual person. She was very much into magic and spirits. She wasn't a loony, just a tad obsessive. Anyways, she passed.
passed away two years ago due to a lost battle with cancer. It pretty much destroyed me. Felt as though the light of my life was taken away from me. I hadn't experienced that pain in my life often, but when I did, I rarely got over it. Just a few months ago, I started having problems with my sleep. At first, it was little things. Waking up in a sweat, having difficulty breathing, waking up and crying. But then it slowly began to get worse. I started seeing my wife in my dreams. She kept calling out for me. I couldn't move toward her and I couldn't speak either. I always woke up from these as soon as my wife came close to me. Didn't stop there. A few days after I started having dreams, I began seeing my wife's face and reflections of stuff. Things like the windows, pots and pans, kitchen utensils. Anything that was reflective. It showed her standing behind me. And when it didn't, it showed her standing a few feet behind me in the corner of the room. During this time, I had my children sent to my parents. Due to the fact I was on medication, didn't want them to see me going through it. Anyways, I've started hearing her. Not speak, more like when you think you hear someone call your name, but you're not 100% sure whether you actually heard someone or not. Objects in my room are moved. Not by a lot, just a few centimeters. But I can still tell. It's just one of those things, you know? But yeah, stuff is still getting worse. Caught on camera. Over several weeks it progressed from little things to very, very strange things. We tried to get it blessed one day. This was the day I seen it with my own eyes. They were going from room to room, saying prayers, and saying what people say when they're trying to get rid of spirits from a home. This house was an old house. The doors have this glossy clear coat, so you can still see your figure in the door. I was standing at the door while they were blessing this one room. As they started the prayer, I see something go past me in the reflection on the door. I also felt a gust of wind. I tried really hard to talk myself out of actually seeing that. I was sort of in denial of what just happened. While talking myself out of it, I was still very curious. I wanted to know if I was going crazy or if that actually happened. I wish I hadn't felt so curious. The next day after blessing the house, it was less active, but we all decided to go out in the memorial, leave the laptop camera on to see what happens when we're not home. We go out, and it's all good. We forget we left the camera on, and just go about our day. After a few hours, we call it a day and head back home. Once we hit the driveway, we got excited to see if we caught anything. We weren't expecting what we saw and what we heard. We grabbed the laptop. It automatically stopped itself at some point. And we start watching it. We had it face down the hallway from the end room, which also captures the front door through the kitchen. My uncle waves at the camera, closes the front door. As soon as that front door closed, Something was thrown at the room door from the closet. It was in the room that the laptop was in. We seen just the arm of something in the corner of the shot, as the camera was not in the closet. The item that was thrown looked like a black book, and what followed was a demonic voice. It was saying things we couldn't understand followed by little kid footsteps running around the house and crying. We were so scared by what we had witnessed, we didn't want to watch the end of the video. We tried
tried to look for what was thrown at the door, there was nothing. I felt a heavy urge to delete that video and not talk about it. As this happened after the movie Paranormal Activity was released, we feared it would get worse if we shared our evidence. This was maybe eight to nine years ago, the first time I've spoken about it. Women's Refuge Slash Ghost A women's refuge is for women who have escaped abusive relationships. Sometimes the women are found, beat, kidnapped, or sadly killed on the property. This was a two-story home, three bedrooms downstairs and two bedrooms upstairs, along with the kitchen and lounge. First instant, my first night there. I was last awake upstairs, having a meal in dim light. In the corner of my eye, I see a tall shadow figure walk out of the room of one of the other women's doors. Thought it was hallucinating. I was extremely fatigued, previously starved and sleep deprived. Incident 2 my son woke us up after midnight, screaming. Never had he screamed like this. I would sue them, but every time he looked back at this one corner of my room, he would scream all over again. Pers personally, I didn't see anything, and again, didn't think too much of it. Incident 3 Now this one happened every night and all of us women on the bottom floor thought nothing of it, until we all talked about it. One of the women mentioned it. So every night, us on the bottom floor would always hear the kids running around, stomping and playing. We found this weird purely because the children upstairs always went to bed well before we ended up in our rooms. But we never questioned it if the noise wasn't a problem. It wasn't until the mother told us her kids stay asleep once they go down that she wouldn't let them stomp around even if they were awake, as these incidents always happened late at night. Now the next incident is what freaked me the fuck out. Downstairs there's a door that's always opened. It leads to the stairs. This door was never closed. My room was furthest away from the store and outside my room was a decent-sized area. There was a couch, a computer on a desk, a computer chair, and across from my room is the washer and dryer and a shower. Note, when you walk downstairs, this room is on the left. As you enter this door, you have to turn left again, which you will see three doors of our individual rooms. It's night. We're all upstairs in the lounge. We hear a thud. Nothing major, but I decided to go down and check my washing that was in the dryer. As I reach the stairs, I see that the door downstairs has been closed. Weird, but I carry on. I walk down, open the door, notice the hallway light was off. That's when I felt really creeped out. I just got an uneasy feeling. Now the light that was falling in from behind me kind of shined some light into the dark hallway of where our rooms were. I looked in the door to the left. The computer was off. And just as I noticed that, the computer chair turned slowly toward my direction. I noped the fuck out of there. Went upstairs and just waited for someone else to get down there. I followed them. I've had many paranormal experiences in the past, which I've told people about. They called me crazy. So, no, I did not share this one with the others. Many other small things happened here. Always at night. But I try not to be fearful. And sometimes acting oblivious or ignoring it was my way of not entertaining whatever was here. Sometimes it's okay to not want to know what's going on. I learned this the hard way in the past. 
There's some things you can't unsee, and some things you can't unhear. If I wasn't clear in the beginning, women and children had died in this house. I think I saw a ghost last night. Since I was a teen, I've had an interest in the supernatural. Though more as an artistic and cultural expression, rather than a real phenomenon. Overall, I'm a pretty difficult person to spook, both because I've been around horror media for years and because of my family history. But something happened last night that I just can't explain. I was sleeping with my husband. I woke up to someone calling my last name kind of urgently. My first instinct was that there was some sort of problem in the building. These were firefighters, or first responders of some kind. I sat right up, and I could clearly see an old lady standing by the side of my bed. I adjusted myself, completely shocked to see her there. She didn't seem evil or angry, just a nice, if a bit surprised, old lady in a dress and a cardigan. When I reached out to her, she dematerialized in front of my eyes. My head started to hurt immediately after she basically dissolved into thin air. I know it wasn't a dream. I had to make the very conscious decision to go back to sleep and deal with it in the morning. I spent the whole day looking up what could possibly have caused this. Some people say it's sleep paralysis, but I had full control of my body and she didn't feel threatening in any way. I actually was just surprised to see someone in my bedroom in the middle of the night. I've had vivid dreams before, but this wasn't that at all. Maybe it was just sleep paralysis, but it felt so real I figured I'd share the story. See if somebody else had been through it too. saw it too. This is something I do not talk about. My husband is the only person that knows the entire event. I'm going to paraphrase to save time. About four years ago, we moved from Florida to North Carolina. My husband's in the towing industry. He went on assignment to Maryland for six months. While in her hometown with my dogs, I had a major shadow person infestation. My husband and I talked at night all the time, and he even saw it on a video call more than once. I felt like I was on the verge of a nervous breakdown. I didn't sleep at night, turned on every light in the house. My husband is Catholic and was very involved as an altar boy from 6 to 19. So much so, he had a free ride all through Catholic high school. This plays into the story later. Seeing these shadow things nightly had me to the point that I felt like it was possibly the beginning stages of a full-on possession in the making. When I say I saw them, it started off in the corner of my eye, and over time, I could look at it straight on. So it wasn't my mind playing tricks on me. Something in my eye, perhaps. Lighting. My husband saw it twice while on video with me. My whole personality changed. I looked like I had an illness. And an illness that was eating me alive from the inside out. My husband would come home every few weeks for two days. When he was home, the activity was virtually non-existent, with the exception of hearing noises that we couldn't explain. He wrote those off as noises from the woods near our house. But when he was gone, I would call him on the brink of a complete panic. I wasn't afraid that it could hurt me physically as much as the emotional, mental, and physical drain it put on me. We 
disgusted, trying to take possession of me. He reached out to his Catholic priest who explained the stages of demonic possession. He told me the first thing that seems to happen was a breaking down of the person mentally and physically. We were there. This all came to an end at one night. I was alone. I was freaked completely out. I had holy water in my home that was blessed by the Pope from the Vatican. I grabbed the holy water, walked around the house, and just sprayed everything. At the same time, I was screaming, telling it that it's not welcome, that I wasn't going to be afraid anymore, and if it was coming to get me, then to fucking make it happen. I had broke. I could no longer live like this. The next morning, the whole house felt different. That night, I no longer saw the shadow figures in my home. It was an almost eerie quiet, with a whole new sense of calm. We do not talk about this ever. I can't even read or watch things having to do with shadow people because of my experience. I'm not saying it in the lightest terms, but I absolutely believe I have a form of PTSD from the events that transpired. We don't watch shows with it. We don't discuss it. So, fast forward a little over four years. We now live in a three-story home. Our bedroom is on the top floor. It's a very quiet country neighborhood, meaning at nine o'clock everything shuts down. My neighbors don't have lighting on their homes other than their front porch light. We don't have parties here or police. It's very quiet, and it's dark at night. We were sitting in bed on the top of the third story floor watching TV. And in my hallway, I saw like a flashlight flashing around the walls. It was very fast, but I sat there and stared at it. So it wasn't like in the blink of an eye. It was more like somebody outside was shining a flashlight on the house, and it popped through the window. This is on the third floor, so if it were a car, the light would never reach to the top level. It was only us in the house that we knew of. I looked at my husband and said, Do you see the flashlight in the hallway just now? To which he responded, Nah, and started to stare. He jumped out of bed and got his gun, his flashlight. He started entering the hallway thinking somebody may have broken in. He goes through the whole top floor, checks behind the curtain in the bathroom, turns on all the lights, finds nothing. We even looked outside on both sides of the house to see if maybe something happened and someone was out there with a flashlight. Nothing. Dark black silence, like every normal night. He was in full protection mode at this point. I told him maybe it was a car, maybe it was a reflection off the TV. A couple other things that it could have caused make him calm down. He sat down on the bed and watched his frozen face. He stared blankly and fixated down the hall. He said, Natalie, I'm watching a shadow go back and forth across our hallway. There's no light behind it. I can't see through it to the window. He said it crossed three to four times. He sat there with a blank expression. In 24 years, I've never seen on him this sort of expression. He jumps up and turns on every single light again. He was clearly freaked out. It was starting to freak me out, too. The minute he mentioned that shadow person, I thought they were back in my life again. I haven't felt this type of fear, panic, quite a few years feel like I'm on super high alert today as I'm typing this out. I don't feel safe to go back into my bedroom. I cannot relive this event again. I looked at him and said, We do not talk about these things. We're not talking about what just happened. And we do not say the word shadow around me ever again in your life. You can think it, but do not say it. After a while, he calmed down enough to lay down and go to sleep. I haven't slept yet. 
I just had to get this off my chest a little bit so I can breathe. I'm already dreading tonight going to bed. I cannot have what I went through the last six months of my life to come back again. I was awoken to a growl in my ear. One night, while I was in a state of drifting to sleep, I wake up in a panic to a deep, evil-sounding growl in my ear. I say in my ear because it sounded so clear to the point where it was as if someone or something was lying next to me made this horrible noise directly into my ear, ASMR style. For context, this was a few years ago. This is when I shared a bedroom with my younger sister. I woke up with my heart racing, shaking. I stayed awake for hours after. I didn't want to be vulnerable to anything evil in my sleep, as I have a feeling it's easier for spirits to mess with you when you're in that state. A few weeks before this happened, I had gone to visit an old abandoned castle and church with my family in the Isle of Wight. We did this because my mom loves all things horror, and she loves exploring creepy places. While we visited, we messed about, didn't take it seriously. I remember me and my mom found a little underground part of the building that had metal bars to block it off. Since we were messing around, I vaguely remember we grabbed the metal bars and shook it while saying, Help! Thinking that it was funny. I now realize I probably provoked an evil spirit. I also remember at the time I had a close friend who was involved in spiritual things could see spirits. I'm not sure if it believes me, but it was certainly believable and interesting to me. She used to tell me when she would see spirits. She told me she had one that followed her at the time. I'm not sure if it was evil, but I suspect it could have been from that as well. Maybe the spirit noticed me being close with her, was curious about me. A few nights after that, well, the growling happened. I would get woken up a lot by this thing that sounded like a man crying and whining. Like an echo in my ear. As soon as I would wake up, it would fade away. I eventually ended up saying out loud, Go away. Leave me alone. It worked. It's been at least four years now since that happened. I have not experienced it again. I still wonder if maybe I was going crazy, or if it was actually paranormal. I used to have lunch with the wind. This place where I used to work at is located on a small boulevard behind which an alley which separated the businesses from a residential area, a typical suburban zoning. It was my habit to walk to the nearby deli to get lunch, then find a nice spot in the adjoining neighborhood to eat it, typically on a curb, the shade of a tree. One day while looking for a likely place, I noticed a tree whipping around much the way they do when the wind comes heralding like an approaching rainstorm. But this was a warm, still sunny day, not a cloud in the sky. I looked at the surrounding trees and shrubs, but all was calm. This one tree and this one tree alone was aggressively swaying to and fro. I decided to sit upon the curb opposite it, observe the situation, See if I could determine the source of this activity. As I watched, it became clear that there was no external wind which shook the leaves and branches. And indeed, there was no single direction in which they moved. It was as though it was being cavorted in, 
through and around the tree, never going so slow as to disturb the grass or roil the dust in the gutter below, but content to remain up in the branches, twisting itself this way and that, seemingly delighted in making the leaves and branches flutter. I tried to see if I could use the movements to determine the directions that maybe this being was traveling, the course which it took, and so by doing get an idea as to its shape and form. But it was not possible, so I resigned to sit and eat my lunch as I watched the extraordinary display. When my break was over, I went back to work, leaving the tree unabatedly dancing. The next day I returned to see if it was still there. It wasn't to my disappointment. I tried to communicate telepathically with it. Didn't receive anything, nor saw any indication it was aware of my presence. It was like sitting in a park watching a child play, blissfully unaware it was being you know, observed, or watching a dog cavort about not knowing it was seen. The rest of the week, I would come, sit, and marvel. I figured that what I was witnessing was one of those two things. Either I was watching a discarnate being desperately trying to affect physical reality for purposes unknown to me, or what I was seeing was a small wind amusing itself. I came to accept the latter. I kind of figured a soul, whether it be a human or a jinn, would recognize my attention, try to capitalize on it. But the being was blithely content to ignore me. I have since learned that such elemental incarnations are part of the development of souls, one of the many rungs on an eternal ladder. I myself have been such a force, learning my lesson as I assert myself over my environment playing with clouds and birds and trees and fallen leaves, whipping the waters to and froth, gently rippling their surface. Astoundingly enough, now that I look back on it, I got bored, took to finding someplace less royalsome to have my lunch. In retrospect, it was my inability to interact with it that lost my interest. Curiously, I never approached it, I never stood beneath the tree as its leaves and branches spasmed about. And recall that, then as now, I felt honored to witness the wind at play, to have been given evidence that there is more, and that it was not for me to intrude. To this day, many decades later, when I drive past my old job place, I look down the street for the tree and think, that's where the wind was. Possible ghost trying to get my attention. I worked night shift at a medical lab. That's where I had a bit of a creepy experience a while ago. There's an area of the lab called STATS. This is where we process specimens that need to be tested immediately. It's kind of isolated from the rest of the lab, and usually there's only two people at this station. Earlier in the night, one of my co-workers and I were exchanging scary stories that had really happened to us. They got me in a really spooky mood, because we talked about a lot of hauntings and paranormal experiences. At some point when I was on break, I was walking down the long empty hallway. My face was in my phone and I suddenly felt like someone was walking right behind me. I thought it was my coworker. He liked to prank me and scare me a lot. But when I turned around, no one was there. The hall was completely empty. There was nowhere anybody could have hidden. So that freaked me out a little bit, especially after talking about scary experiences with my coworker. But I didn't read into it too much. Figured I was psyching myself out. 
At some point between 2 and 2.30, I was working at my station when I felt a distinct tap-tap-tap on the back of my chair. I turned around and was startled to see that no one was there. The only other person nearby was my partner on stats. She was working at another computer station, a good ten feet or so away from me. I had reacted to the tapping immediately. There was physically no way she could have tapped my chair and jumped back to her station in the split second it took for me to turn around. That tripped me out, but again, I figured ghost stories had to be psyching me up. I was imagining things. But that tapping felt very real. I remember hearing the sound right before, feeling my chair vibrate like somebody was tapping on it. At this point I should mention that phones aren't allowed in the stat station. So, mine was in the locker, which was nowhere nearby. When I got off work around 4am, I discovered that my girlfriend had been trying to call and text me for almost two hours. I called her back. She said how she'd had a nightmare where I was hurt, and it gave her really bad anxiety. She'd been trying to call and make sure I was okay. I assured her I wasn't hurt, I got home safely, helped her calm down. Later on, I looked at her texts and calls. I noticed that they'd started around 2.30. I asked her what time she woke up. She said a little after 2. So she woke up within the same time frame that I thought I felt that tapping on my chair. It's most likely a coincidence. And again, I probably imagined the tapping because I'd been sharing ghost stories and psyched myself out. But I also don't necessarily disbelieve the supernatural. And ever since that experience, I love to entertain the idea that a ghost was trying to get my attention and be like, Hey, your girlfriend needs you to go check your phone. Posted about strange things going on outside my house. So here's what's going on inside. The first thing that happened was when my husband and I, boyfriend at the time, we were playing hide and go seek. We decided to take a break and watch a movie. I had to use the restroom, so away I went. I went into our guest bathroom which is the only one downstairs besides the one in our master bedroom. It's located in the corner hallway next to the two spare rooms in the house. Currently, his office and our son's room. I went inside and quickly did my business. I don't like being alone for obvious reasons, I feel. Started to wash my hands. The sink is right next to the door. While I was drying my hands, I heard and saw a shadow of the door. Someone run up to the door, stop, turn around, and run into one of the adjacent rooms. Figured it was my husband. Maybe he was ready to start the game again. Ripped open the door. Fully searched each of the rooms and didn't find anyone. Which should have if it was him. There was no way for him to run by the time whatever it was moved from the door. I opened it. I clearly saw the shadow go right toward the room, not to the left, toward the living room. The second thing that happened was my husband and I were playing pool, which is right next to our front door. Right after we broke, we heard a loud knock on the front door. We looked at each other, obviously confused as it was pretty late at night. We both went to the door and answered it. There was no one there. We both stepped out onto the porch to take a look around. We stayed out there for about 30 seconds or so to take a look around and headed back in. We were both shocked to see that the pool balls were in a straight line down the center of the pool table. It was very shocking since I had just mentioned. It just broke and the pool balls were scattered when we exited. The third and most recent thing that happened was when I was alone in the house. Shocker. I was sweeping the steps, 
bolts and some of the plaster-like stuff on the ceiling had started to flake off and make a huge mess. I was cleaning up the landing at the top of the steps when I started mouthing off at the energy that I was feeling around me. I felt unwelcome in my own home and that pissed me off. I know I shouldn't have said the things I did, but I was pissed as this is my house. Well, write what I said here, but still live in this house. I don't want to put those words back into existence. You'll see why. There are three rooms upstairs, and all doors were closed during this time. Once I started getting really belligerent, all three doors started to shake violently in the door frames. It was as if there was someone behind each of them, just shaking and banging them against the frames. I immediately started having a panic attack, sank to the floor. I screamed out for whatever it was to stop and that I was sorry. And it did. I bolted down the stairs to find my phone and call my husband. As I was about halfway down, I felt a hard and violent shove at the center of my back. Almost caused me to tumble down the remainder of the steps. My husband never felt threatened in our home, but I constantly feel it. Even before I made all those comments. And this all happened before the car started showing up. They were all several months apart. I'm not sure if this belongs here, but I need answers. This happened several times at this point. It started about 16 months ago when I was cleaning my house around 12 a.m. My husband, boyfriend at the time, worked nights. So I had to adjust to his schedule. I usually kept the blinds open during the day. would go around closing them at night. That was while I tidied up before bed. Our room was my last stop on the first night. The curtains and blinds were open as I was sweeping the floor when I felt the sensation of being watched. I looked around me when my eyes focused on this silver sedan parked outside my house. Mostly in the grass in my front lawn. Now for context, my bedroom window is about 15 yards from the road at the front of my house. It's a small front yard in a pretty densely populated neighborhood. Anyway, I saw the car before I saw her or him, I'm not sure. But there was clearly someone sitting in the driver's seat of the car, and another person standing about five yards from my window. They were clearly staring at me. The only reason I could see this is because the moon was fairly bright this night. I shrieked, dropped to the floor, crawled to the light switch to turn it off so I could be seen. I called my husband to ask him what I should do. He told me to call the cops. Duh. I did, and of course by the time they got there, the car was gone. They asked if they could see my security footage. I agreed. But the footage from that section of time was just gone. It skipped over the few minutes that they would have been outside. This has happened several times since then, and I've completely given up on calling the police, as I feel as if they'd think I'm crazy. I have no proof that this is happening, but I'd like to have some opinions as to why they may be doing this. In the past 16 months has happened mm, probably 10 times. Sometimes the person is standing in the yard, sometimes they aren't. Also, the car has been like at a different, well, it's been different every single time. But the light is always inside the cabin of the vehicle. But when I go to look, the people inside are never looking to where I can see their faces. I'll run to grab my phone to call someone, anyone. They'll already be gone. The Room in the Back When I was a kid in the 90s, 
I would often sleep at my grandmother's house. It was in the middle of a small village in the Jura region of France. The bedroom I would stay in was called the Room in the Back. As the name suggests, it was one of the last two rooms at the end of the main corridor shaped like an L. There wasn't anything special about that bedroom. It was pretty small, contained, had a bed, shelves with books, some other basic furniture. Yet for some reason that room creeped me out. I felt an unwelcoming presence, and I would always struggle to fall asleep, scared of whatever invisible forces seemed to be lurking in the dark. One night there, when I was around eight, I woke up scared and confused. I found myself lying down on the floor in total darkness. I feel I need to meet... Well, I just stumbled over my words. I feel I need to make two things clear here. Hmm. This is the only time in my entire life that I've ever awoken outside of whatever bed or couch I had been sleeping in. The second thing to note is that despite the fact that the house is located in a small village, it wasn't particularly isolated, and the streetlights outside would always leave a bit of light filtering through the closed blinds at night. So here I was, a child, surrounded by total obscurity, struggling to understand why it wasn't in my bed. I tried my best to stay calm, and touched around me hoping to find the side of the bed nearby so I could climb back onto it. Simply could not find it. I tried for several minutes, but it just seemed not to be there. Which was extremely strange, considering that the bedroom wasn't that big in the first place. I therefore decided to move forward in a single direction to find a wall. One that which I could then follow until I would find the bed. Things just got even stranger as I tried to find a wall. I would bump into furniture I would not recognize, and despite all my efforts, I simply could not find one. Everything around me was completely and utterly unfamiliar. I thought about calling for help. My mother was sleeping in the bedroom on the other side of the corridor, and my parents in the living room. However, I imagined them finding me screaming on the floor and decided not to, not wanting to face that kind of embarrassment. Finally, I fell asleep on the floor, giving up on finding the bed. I woke up the next morning in that damn bed and under the blankets. It was like the entire event had been nothing more than a weird dream. Yet, it absolutely did not feel like a dream. I'm a natural lucid dreamer, and even back then I was kind of already very familiar with how dreams feel. And this just wasn't one, or at least I don't think it was. A few years ago, a long time after this strange occurrence, I went to England to visit my aunt, who's from the other side of my family. She claims to be a witch, and is into a lot of the New Age stuff. I've always been skeptical, but I had to admit, she's done and said a few strange things that got me to go from not believing her to being a bit more neutral about it. We were all talking about her respective families. She went on about one time where she had been in my grandmother's house. This is when I was a baby. I thought it was a good opportunity to see if she had sensed anything unusual there and asked her making sure to keep the question open enough not to influence her. First thing she said, Ah yes, the room in the back. She said in English and had no idea what we called it in French. There's something wrong with that room. I was spooked. The day I got back to France, I decided to confront my mother about it, since she'd spent her childhood in that house. As soon as I asked her what the hell was wrong with the room in the back, she froze, and her face became white. She explained to me that when she was little, she went in that bedroom with a few friends. They tried to invoke spirits, for fun. They sat down on the floor in a circle, holding hands, and said, 
Spirits, if you're here, knock three times. They immediately heard three violent knocks and ran off screaming. She told me that ever since, that room feels weird. And that's it. Nowadays, the room's kind of different. Still used as a guest bedroom. Still feels weird. But I'd say a lot less than when I was a kid. I know my brothers who are 10 years younger have also complained about feeling uncomfortable there for some reason. They never had any unusual experience there. Encounter with a demon or a shadow person. About 10 or so years ago, I have the house to myself still living with parents at the time. I'm having a friend staying over. The night is going smoothly and pretty normal, playing co-op video games, as teenage boys do. But eventually we both end up on our phones scrolling through Tumblr. My friend stumbles upon a 40 to 50 minute audio tape file of a private investigator talking to a high school campus about his experience during a murder investigation he's conducted. I believe it took place in Texas. Long story short, towards the end of this audio file, it all leads up to the PI believing that the victim was exposed to a demon or an evil entity. Who was the reason for the death of this person? He states at the very end testimony of this case that this demon feeds off of your fear. The more you think about it, the stronger its energy and presence gets. As far as we could both tell, it was a real testimony and not a parody or creepypasta. So me and my friend heard the whole 40 or so minutes of the testimony. We were just enthralled, almost hypnotized by it. And afterward, we tried to go back to playing our games. Well, not five minutes later, the power in my room and my room just goes out. No big deal. So I just go and flip the breaker. Turn it back on. Three minutes later, boom. Again. Flip the breaker again. One minute later, boom again. This continues with shorter time frames until the power in my room just won't come back on. The first time it happens, we think it's mere coincidence. But by this point, fear is really happening. And the thought of this entity is in our heads. At this point, about... 12 to 1 a.m., my friend decides that this isn't worth it for him. Heads back to his place. <laughs> Thanks, leaving me to myself. So the night goes on a little bit, and after the friend leaves, I spend the rest of the night in my living room. Lights on, I crash on the couch. I wake up with the TV still on. It's between 3 to 4 a.m., and I don't know what the fuck possessed me to go back to my room to sleep, but for some reason... I convinced myself it was all in my head. So I went to bed to go to sleep. I fall asleep incredibly fast. My dream begins with me in my bed in my room. Just as I was laid out in real life. In the pitch black. This was extremely vivid and an exact replica of my room. I was as lucid as I would have been awake. But on top of one of the corners of my room where the wall meets the ceiling, I saw a pair of angry, dirty-looking eyes. They were on a pitch blacker than black. It was hanging on my ceiling, staring into my soul. It was fixated on these eyes, and they were fixated on me. I was just in shock, couldn't move. But the second I tried to move at all, the figure just zoomed to another corner of my ceiling and then launched at me. I woke up in a sweat just before I got contacted. The dream felt so fucking real and vivid, I woke up literally screaming. There was a real sense of dread that took over my entire body in that moment. I felt mentally and physically sick. Power was still not working in my room, so I went out to the living room again finished the night with all the lights on, not sleeping at all. Nothing more ever came from that night, 
but as far as I can tell and find, that audio tape never existed. Spent days upon days trying to find it multiple times all over the internet. Nothing even close comes up in my search results. By the way, power to my room worked perfectly the following day, at least after the sun rose. It's worked perfectly ever since. Ghost from Europe haunted me for over two years. This is my very real story that happened in 2014. My family flew from the U.S. to Wales for my brother's wedding. We stayed in a very old remodeled barn party house in Abergavenny. It was right below the canal. And we had a free day before the wedding party. I was meeting at a local pub that night. I got back from a run at the canal, showered, and had time to take a nap, still a little jet-lagged before dinner. As I'm lying in bed, I feel the presence of a woman, and then feel the front side of a hand stroke my cheek. Then feel the entity jump on me and pin me to the bed, struggling, finally get free. I then hear a woman's cackle and laugh three times, like, ha, ha, ha. This was witnessed. My door was half open. There was a sitting area outside. My mom was sitting there. She saw me laying in bed struggling. She didn't hear the laugh. Nothing else happened during the trip. The next month, I started dating a woman who would eventually move in, become my wife. This is when things started getting weird. Anytime she would spend the night, if we fall asleep with an arm or leg touching each other, we would both have terrible nightmares. I don't ever recall having bad dreams or nightmares. One that I recall vividly was an extremely old and wrinkled woman in black and white screaming at me in a foreign language I didn't understand. We would make a point to sleep far apart as possible to avoid the dreams. Then one night I have a dream. I'm in this astral plane. Everything is blue around me. Standing in front of me is a young, petite woman. She was short, like five feet tall. Looked very European with a round face and dark blonde hair. She was dressed in a very period-correct plain cloth from a long time ago. Wasn't wearing any makeup. She walked up to me and said, My name is Abigail. And nothing else. I tried talking to her, but that's all she said. Now, I've never heard the name Abigail in my life. If I Google it, I'd see it's Eastern European for Abigail. After that, Abigail got really spiteful and tried to wreck our relationship. A couple of key things happened. Pulled my wife's hair. She was walking up her steps and was talking to me. And I see as if somebody grabbed her hair and yanked her down each step. She froze and we just looked at each other. Bent her engagement ring. It was on the dresser. And one morning she showed me that it was so smashed she couldn't get it on her ring finger. And to me, loaded a conversation from Google Hangouts when I was talking to another woman before I met my wife. I didn't even have Hangouts installed on the phone. The conversation happened on my previous phone. Thankfully it was date stamped. I settled her down and showed her. Other small things like hiding stuff. Stuff was going missing constantly. One time we bought a bunch of meat. And it was in this huge bag. We had set it down on the basement to put other groceries away and it was gone. We looked everywhere. Didn't find it until a year later when there was a bag of rotting meat in the basement. As the next couple of years went on, things started to die down. And, when we married, they stopped. I guess she finally gave up. Never had any sage cleansing done, or had a medium visit the house because I didn't want to make things worse and present a challenge for the entity to fight. But I was researching mediums, and I was close. Is 
my house haunted. I'm a 16-year-old girl situated in India. My parents and my sister. We live in a street which is quiet. We don't get sounds except for occasional things like somebody's wedding, things like that. I live in a building where everyone moved out, leaving only my family and another guy's family. For a few months we were experiencing paranormal stuff, but they were unnoticeable. But for the first few days it had been getting out of hand, and it's noticeable. Even after I did everything in my mind, like using sage. I'll list a few of my experiences here, but before that, I'll explain how my house is. The main door in the living room is attached together, and it has a small washroom for guests. We don't use that washroom except, you know, cleaning it once in every week. And two rooms. The very first experience happened in the living room. Me and my sister and my mother were chilling, sitting on the couch, when my sister pointed at something. I didn't care at first, but then I saw something in front of the living room washroom. The door was open. It was the shadow of a whole person, walking. Then it disappeared. We instantly checked the washroom. No one was inside there. There wasn't something there that would cause a shadow of a moving person. Then we saw stuff like sculptures moving, doors automatically opening. Then this experience happened in the living room once again. The washroom door was open and I looked at it. I caught a glimpse of a white face. Fully white, black spots in the place where the eyes are supposed to be. Then it vanished. This morning, I placed my pair of earphones in the middle of the stool. I sat down on the bed. After a few minutes, I heard a noise. Naturally, I looked up to see my earphone floating in mid-air for half a second. Then it fell on the ground. The same incident happened to me when I was doing chores one day in the kitchen, but with a spatula. I had more experiences about this, but my biggest question is, is my house haunted? Weird Encounter in the Swiss Alps This happened while I was doing my army service in Switzerland. I'm not really allowed to talk about what we were doing, but I'll try to keep things clear. I know that this sub is for real paranormal activities, and I know that everybody writing here will claim that his or her story is real, and me too. But this really happened to me back in 2011. My company had installed a huge antenna, and it had to be guarded by two soldiers, day and night. We were on the top of a hill, far away from any city, and near a huge forest. It was 1800 hours. I had just started my watch of six hours with another soldier. Everything went fine. We smoked cigarettes, kept ourselves occupied until our watch ended at midnight. Then we received a call from our superior. He told us that one of the soldiers that was supposed to take the watch couldn't come, and one of us had to stay for another watch of six hours. Well, we tossed a coin to see who would stay from midnight to six. With temperatures of around negative 20 Celsius. Of course, I lost. I had to wait for the other soldier to come and join me for the night watch. They didn't send the best, because uh, I knew he would sleep all night when I saw him climbing the hill with his sleeping bag. And that's what he did. He immediately took place in the tent fell asleep. It was the coldest and longest night of my life. But nothing special about it. The weird part happened in the morning. We received another call from our superior. He told us that we had an NBC exercise. It means that we all, well, to wear all day long our NBC suit. That's short for an anti-chemical suit. 
the one with the gas mask and everything that goes with it. I was really upset and exhausted because I wasn't able to sleep with that thing on. And sleep was my only reward after that 12-hour watch. Well, I got out of the tent, and this is where I saw something. There was a woman standing next to our antenna. She wasn't moving, she was just standing there, five meters from the tent. I couldn't see her face because the sun was starting to rise behind her, like a locked fighter in Tekken, really. I knew she was a woman because she had really long hair, and she had curves. Remember, we were in the middle of nowhere, and this lady was standing there, not moving like she was frozen. Started to freak out. Called the other guy to show him. Show him what it was that I was looking at. I don't know why, but he wasn't scared at all. He told her to leave because she isn't allowed there. She didn't make a move. She just stood there looking at us or at least in our direction. And this lasted for at least a minute or two. I was so confused how a woman could ignore two soldiers telling her to leave a forbidden area. I mean, we're in Switzerland. The army's not that impressive, I know, but people usually don't do these kinds of things. They would just move away, especially when it's six in the morning. And what was she doing in the middle of nowhere? Obviously not dressed for this cold weather. How long was she standing there? And how did she end up here? I didn't hear any footsteps. So many questions ran through my mind at that moment. The other soldier didn't think twice, started walking towards her. When he almost reached her, he started running very fast. She ran directly into the forest nearby. I saw her getting deep into the forest and she disappeared from our sight. I'm really a rational thinker. I question everything and think that there's always an explanation. For me, the explanation is that she was simply a jogger because of the way she ran to the forest. But almost three minutes had passed between the first time I saw her and the moment she started running away. Three minutes of not moving at all, looking at me, dressed in something really tight at negative 20 degrees, and in the middle of nowhere. <laughs>